republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Karen, can you take roll? Ms. Saunders? Here. Mr. Bealey? Here. Ms. Oglis? Mr. Fellows? Here. Mr. Mazur? Mr. McGee? Here. And Mr. Wood? Here. Thank you. Um, just for the record, in the absence of uh, Mr. Mazur, uh, Roger will be a voting member this evening, and at least for the moment, um, while Ms. Oglis is not here, Ms. Saunders will also be a voting member as a second alternate. Um, next item is approval of minutes from the March 14th meeting. So moved, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion. Um, my apologies, I do have a, a proposed amendment. Okay. Um, on under item nine, it says um, Ms. Ms. Saunders about halfway down the page. Ms. Saunders stated she had visited the site. She asked how far down the development would would be, especially if it was in the lay down area, and if drainage will be directed to the existing pond for the entire site. Ms. Ms. Saunders noted that there is opportunity for improvement and to use the existing pond in the stormwater management plan. I'll hand these to you, Karen, yeah, that's okay. if you wouldn't mind. And then also under item 14, planning board comments. Um, I have one edit there too, where I had expressed uh, support for the staff pursuing the stormwater authority. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I move approval of the amended motion. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second that. <laughs> All in favor? Any discussion? Any further discussion? All in favor? Approved. That's staying. Was absolutely. To make us abstaining. Thank you. Same with me. Are you Roger? As is Roger. <coughs> Thank you. Next item: Douglas Title Company requests a subdivision amendment review for 368 Gorham Road, South Coast Community Church, Assessor's Map R19, lots. 2104 and 2114. Jay? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as you just know, this is a subdivision amendment to the South Coast Community Church. This actually be the fourth amendment to this subdivision plan. Um, this one is pretty de minimis in nature in that it's a conveyance of a five foot by five foot area from one lot to the other to relieve the uh, existing uh, easement that is on one of the properties. Um, staff really has nothing else to offer on this. I, I will note actually we did, our staff comments did have some notes about plan notes to be revised. We have, um, the applicant did provide staff with a revised plan. I think it was earlier today. We did have an opportunity to review those um, and we're satisfied that those have been adequately addressed. Uh, right. Thanks Jay. And I'll turn over the applicant. Good evening Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Jim Fisher with Northeast Civil Solutions. Jay pretty much said everything that needed to be said. Uh, essentially, by way of really quick background, uh, when this subdivision was originally created in 2009 and the lots were split out, uh, they were subsequently sold, homes were being built on them, and uh, as is sometimes the case, a, uh, a well driller went in and was pointed in what he thought was the right direction and drilled a well that serviced one of the lots very nicely, only to find out a little bit later that it was about uh, three feet over the property line. So instead of going out to redrill a well at considerable expense, uh, they went to the developer went to the uh, individual on the other, actually the developer at that time, um, who owned the other property said, fine, I'll just grant you an easement. There's not a problem. It's literally five feet by five feet, and it was literally located in the middle of the property. As you'll see on your plans, uh, it's right in the section. And uh, when the lot over here was then eventually sold, uh, just somewhat recently, the individual who owned that property preferred not to have an easement on her land but had no problems uh, changing that easement to a fee title sale of this 25 square foot block, uh, literally five feet by five feet. And nobody had an issue with that as far as the two owners are concerned and the developer, so, but it is a change to the plan. So toward that end, uh, we did want to come to the board and present this to you guys, ask or answer any questions or address any comments that you might have. Otherwise, just asking for approval for this fourth amended subdivision plan 
uh, that will indeed transfer fee title of that 25 square foot area from one lot to the other. Having said that, I'm open to any questions or comments you have. Thank you. Um, we do have the opportunity for any public comment if there is anyone who is interested. I don't see any. Um, is there any board comment, any questions? It's fairly straightforward. Okay. Seeing none, I will move to approve the application of Ann Thierio for the fourth amend amended plan of the South Coast Community Church subdivision. The approval amends the plan by enabling a conveyance of a five foot by five foot area from lot 14 to lot four. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. The uh, next item, Valentine Development LLC requests a sketch plan review for lot 118, Eastern Village, Assessor's Map, R73, lot 21A. Jay? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, <clears throat> let's see, just by way of background, um, the proposed site was part of the original, or is part of the original Eastern Village subdivision um, for development of multifamily units. One of the conditions of the original approval for this project, I think dating back to, I think it was 2008, if I'm not mistaken, <coughs> was that all multifamily components of the uh, subdivision uh, require uh, site plan approval through this board. Um, the applicant is uh, here before the board to begin the sketch plan discussion. The board members will note the sketch plan is an informal application, really just an opportunity for the applicant to provide the board with an overview of the concepts they're thinking and for the board to provide some guidance um, as the applicant moves forward with their formal application. Um, just to that end, staff noted that it would be helpful um, for the applicant to try to demonstrate how the proposal is consistent with those approved space and bulk standards and those areas to which they'll be seeking uh, to modify moving forward. Um, again, by way of background, this project is in the CMB district, um, the traditional neighborhood. Uh, development district is an overlay district which allows for a great deal of flexibility between the plan board and applicant to really work towards uh, the goals of that district. Um, and then just understanding how um, the changes in, in uh, the original approval will, um, it, what the impacts would be in terms of uh, the overall site elements in terms of traffic patterns or any state permitting that might have occurred will be helpful uh, as this moves along. Um, We'll also note uh, the board did receive a host of um, comments from uh, residents on this project, um, which you know some talked about uh, concerns with the proposal in terms of those uh, intensity and uh, uh, density developments um, that will be discussed as part of that review process. There are also a host of concerns uh, addressed regarding the existing status of the construction phasing, and just so board and folks are aware, that is something that the town does have uh, assurances in place. It is part of a sort of standard uh, construction project. Um, though we are sensitive to those concerns, um, there are, uh, as I said, being conducted in a concurrence with the town's existing requirements. So um, I just wanted to provide that bit of background on that on those issues as well. So with that, Mr. Chair, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Jay. <coughs> and I'll turn it over to Mr. Anderson. Uh, good evening, Kerry Anderson. Um, it's been a while since I've been here, so uh, I'll try and walk down through the items as best I can um, and hopefully not jump around too much. Uh, as far as background goes, the project was approved in 2007 uh, with what you see that's colored. Um, there's a legend down here that talks about single family, uh, where the townhouses could go, where multifamily could go, where some of the lots would be cottage lots, um, roadways, open space, and whatnot. We came to the board originally with a concept for lot 118, which is the proposed multifamily site that we're here before you tonight on about a year and a half ago. And we came back about three months later um, with a revision to that plan, uh, but I still was not happy with how that was coming out. Uh, so we kind of set it aside, continued building homes within the neighborhood, uh, which there's a lot more homeowners there now than there were then. 
and then presented uh, <coughs> the plan that we have to share with you tonight uh, back in February and uh, did not hold a meeting with the neighbors, had uh, not held a meeting previously with the neighbors. Um, and uh, the first reason it was tabled was because I was out of state. And the second reason it was tabled is so it would give us a chance to hold a meeting with the neighbors. Um, a lot of good things came out of the meeting with the neighbors. I think more, well, probably for both of us. Um, I didn't um, have a neighborhood meeting because I've always felt that uh, the quality of the work that I do, um, eh, not to uh, be egotistical or anything like that, but really didn't need to be questioned. I've always tried to uh, build uh, the right stuff, um, tried to uh, make for a better place that uh, people not only live but also see. Um, so we didn't have a we didn't have a neighborhood meeting, and from that, um, a lot of people uh, found out about it secondhand through the current, um, and not from uh, not from us. So we tabled it for the second meeting so that we could have a chance to have a meeting with the neighbors. We've since had two meetings, and um, I think that the neighbors and uh, ourselves uh, have a lot better sense of. Um, have a lot better appreciation for where um, we both want to go as far as moving forward, not just them as being neighbors in the neighborhood, but also with what we're trying to do and trying to uh, accomplish here. The, um, the architecture is essentially the same as what we have uh, built within the neighborhood which is between a period of 1870 and 1920. That 50 year span is uh, what we've focused on and this architecture here um, does the same. Um, they are gonna be all rentals, but we're building it to a standard that we can kind of minimize them and at some point way down the future, uh, certainly not short term or not in the interim long term, uh, you know, sell them if the demand is there. But they will be rentals, and um, by that they've been given the name apartments, so we're going to call them apartments. But I think if you take a look at it, you'll see that um, um, I haven't seen an apartment project uh, brought forward like this, I don't think ever. Um, the quality of the design, the architecture, um, and whatnot is, uh, is very appealing and it's not inexpensive to build. The, um, you know, I, I've been saving uh, articles in the paper that talk about the need for housing and, and whatnot and, you know, I got a stack that's probably about this high that's on my desk and I thought, well, I'll bring that up but I don't think I need to. I think that everybody uh, understands that there's, there's a demographic shift that's in place right now um, and it's not a one or a two or a three year shift. It's actually a generational shift. There's a lot of people that are choosing to rent instead of own. And these aren't people who are necessarily, um, you know, making minimum wage, um, have, uh, as one person had mentioned to me recently, down on their luck or made poor business decisions. Uh, they're choosing to rent because they realize that uh, buying a home is, is very expensive. Um, people want to take their precious time that they have in their lives, whether they're up in their years or whether they're young, and they want to spend it doing things that don't represent necessarily mowing your lawn and painting your house and worrying about all the other things that come along with home ownership. So, um, and that that is a, the, the, the demand there is, is, uh, is quite extensive. And as I said, I don't think it's a one or a two or a five year uh, demographic shift that you're seeing. I think it's a generational shift. And I think that um, we'll be, you know, we're, we're in the midst of it now, the early stages of it, uh, from what I've read and studied. And um, it's gonna last at least for the next uh, 10 to 20 years. And who knows what happens after that. But uh, this is the architecture here. Um, 
And then as far as the site plan that we're proposing, <coughs> slide this over just a little bit. So you can see how it fits in the lot one eighteen. <coughs> Do I turn this on? Or do I on, the, on the bottom, Karen. Oh, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is lot 118, right? Okay, so here's Black Point Road. Oak Hill is up here, Black Point Road, Eastern Trail coming down along here. Lot 118, this is lot 118. So we've got, we have, um, we have three proposed entrances. We have one that comes off here, one that comes off here basically right here. And then we've got one that's currently in place, although it's going to be shifted further to the north um, right here. So there'll be three entrances and uh, ingress and egresses out uh, of, the, um, of the project. One of the things that uh, we uh, wanted to make sure that we had happen with this project here is we wanted to have the streets be um, you know, you, you really can't say you've, you've got life here because there aren't, a, you know, there isn't uh, stores and other things, but we wanted to specifically have on-street parking. This, uh, this will be privately maintained, uh, so as far as the parking standards go with respect to on-street parking, it, uh, it's with us, it will be maintained. But we wanted to have on-street parking and we wanted people to be able to uh, park on the street walk around the street um, rather than just having Uh, to give you an idea, um, if you've been down to Eastern Village now, we've got a four-unit townhome building that is, um, uh, it's, um, it's about 5,000 square feet. Um, each one of these uh, buildings here range from uh, 2,100 to um, uh, uh, 38, uh, excuse me, to 2,500. Uh, so, um, so in terms of the overall footprint size, they're smaller than what uh, a four-unit townhouse building is that's currently built down there now. And in the approved, although we'll have to come back to the site plan, we've got up to six and eight-unit buildings um, that would be all connected up and would be uh, built at some point in the neighborhood. Um, there, this is a three-story building, this is a two-story building, this is a three-story building, two-story, three-story, three-story, three-story. So the stories um, vary, but we want to keep, you know, pretty much the same height throughout there. Obviously this one's bigger, it's got a much different element. As you drive down Black Point Road, you'll see that element there and the barn building itself also will, uh, will stand out. So the, um, the size of the, of the actual building footprint is, um, is smaller than maybe what it may seem like on the uh, site plan. Um, I'll go through some of the comments that, uh, that the town uh, has submitted to you as far as uh, staff comments. Um, we, um, we, again, I've talked about the previous plan that the board uh, on both occasions supported, um, but we uh, took a step back. We didn't, uh, we didn't want to move forward with it. We, we do like this, and this is what we do intend to move forward with. Uh, we're taking um, advantage of the uh, density factors 
the, the neighborhood was approved originally for uh, 195 units and our TMP traffic movement permit is uh, as well in excess of 200. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the number is. I, uh, I looked for it today. I couldn't find it, but I know that it, it exceeds 200. Um, the trip generation from multifamily is, is uh, less than single family. So from a traffic movement uh, standpoint, we'll be all set there. We'll provide all this information, obviously, prior to our next meeting. Um, but I'm just going to go down through some of the items here that we have vetted out to make sure that we're okay to move forward at this point. Um, so what we're doing here is um, a lot of the units within the, within the buildings here are, uh, are under 750 square feet. Within the TND zone, we've got a uh, density factor, which allows for homes that are 1,200 square feet and under to uh, take advantage of a fractional dwelling unit. So um, 1,200 square feet is, uh, is, is two-thirds of a unit, 750 square feet and under is a half of a unit. And uh, most of the units in here are, uh, are under 750 square feet. There are some that are over, but um, the original density that was uh, allowed on here um, will um, remain the same the actual number of units are higher, but the actual number of dwelling units, if you uh, take into account the density factor, will remain the same. Actually, it'll be a little bit less. I should, I should actually mention that. We, um, this building right here is right now slated to be a 12-unit building, and we have met with long-range planning. Uh, I believe there's a... Um, something that's moving forward uh, by the planning staff to um, allow that change in the TND. It's already allowed in the TBC. A change was made last fall, um, and we're requesting it in the TND as well. We would still be moving forward with the site plan, uh, looking for an approval at the time that we come back to see you, and if, um, if that um, 12 units is not approved at the time, then we'll just either make it an eight unit building or we'll, we'll do something, but it'll make sure that we've taken that into account. The, um, the pond that is down on Eastern Road, this pond right here, what this pond does is it takes the flow from the whole neighborhood, including phase nine, which will be future development, and uh, it uh, sheets over into a wetland area, and then from there into a outlet control structure, and then we, we replaced the old culvert that was um, failing down on the eastern trail about two years ago, year and a half ago. Um, Stormwater has already been, the amount of stormwater that this site will, that the pond will receive from this site is, uh, has already been taken into account as far as the impervious area. Uh, I spoke to my last engineer uh, about it uh, recently. Um, he no longer works with the engineering firm that uh, I use. Um, and again, it also will take everything from uh, what will be future development which would be phase eight or phase nine. Um, our, our parking, um, the amount of parking that we have right now on the site is about 88 spaces and, uh, or 86 spaces. Um, given that this is going to be um, reduced, um, will be within our parking um, numbers to meet the, uh, to meet the uh, um, town's uh, required parking arrangement uh, um, use. Um, the only state, I don't see any state permitting here. My engineer didn't see any state permitting here. It's, it's really simply uh, at this point uh, site plan approval at the town. Um, but we will have uh, any information that we need to. We'll work with staff between now and our next submission to make sure that anything there 
that needs to be addressed is addressed, but we're confident that we'll, everything will be okay there. Um, we've met with the fire department uh, regarding uh, fire lanes and whatnot, and uh, everything is all set there. The fire department has asked us to make uh, an area right here where they could uh, bring the fire truck up uh, to um, for getting around Building A, uh, which we'll do in the uh, in the engineering going forward. SU 30 movements um, that all works. Uh, from a turning template standpoint. And um, with that, I think I will, um, I guess, turn it over to the board and ask uh, for input. Thank you. I'd like to start. Mike? Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> not, not to carry right yet, but what we're here for is simply to to give some opinion as to how we feel about the added density? Or is that something that's going to come back to us later once it's been vetted through the long-range planning, et cetera? Well, at this point, I don't think it would need to go back to the long-range planning necessary, mm -hmm. uh, necessarily. What there is is <coughs> um, long-range planning a few, I don't know, let's call it a year or so ago, did go through the process of uh, working with Mr. Anderson and others a, uh, to put together a proposal to amend the TNT zoning that mm -hmm. allowed the density factors to be used within that district, which was ultimately approved by council. Mr. Anderson, subsequent to that approval, did come back to this board um, and under his last revision applied that to a number of other lots. Um, there's some what are called limited single family units out there and some cottage uh, units out there now that were uh, part of a more recent approval. Um, so what this board would be asked to do is to allow the density determination to be used in this partic on this particular lot. Because um, right now when you look at the table of allowed uses and number of units per, um, per lot, this lot is identified for 28 units. Um, and, and so the question would be, you know, as, as staff notes sort of indicated to the board, is, do the additional units have a meaningful impact, or is it, you know, um, or does it sort of fit in with all the parameters and approvals already out at the site? So, hmm. uh, hopefully that answers your questions. But and then specifically tonight, this is a sketch plan, so there's no formal decisions or um, uh, determinations being made by the board. Rather, just guidance and uh, thoughts based on what you've been provided to date. Okay, thanks. <coughs> well, then I'll stick with just just. The concept, because you know the, the the density units and the bonuses and everything else get confusing to me, and I'll wait till that all gets worked out, maybe at a at a subsequent meeting and and further discussions with the department. But conceptually, I like the idea. Certainly, um, I know this area does call for um, m uh, development that uh, mimics that which you're, you've illustrated here tonight, Kerry. Uh, but when I look at this right away, I uh, as a matter of scale, it appears to me that it almost begs for a little bit more green space. Um, can you kind of go over with me a little bit as to where the opportunities are for even just very passive recreation and walking and that kind of thing? It just looks busy, that's all. This, is, this area right here is a common green right here within the... This area right here. Yeah. So that is an area right there that um, that uh, is green space that if somebody wants to, you know, get out of their um, their home and they want to go outside and uh, you know um, throw a ball for the dog or it will be pet friendly. Um, and now the areas uh, that abut this area that provide for opportunities to recreate, and walk, and that kind of thing? Well, there's, um, there's sidewalks that pretty much go around the whole. These are all sidewalks. So there's, we've got sidewalks that basically wrap around the whole site uh, rather than having, you know, parking and then just, you know, you walk straight up to the door. Um, this area over here 
is part of a previous development that we did about 15 years ago over here. Um, we have an easement, uh, landscape easement right over it. Um, I don't know, we're right on the Eastern Trail. That's really kind of one of the biggest amenities I think that there is. Um, but um, we don't, we do have an area that we're planning on uh, putting a, um, an outdoor uh, uh, fire pit and uh, whatnot so that people can gather outside um, and uh, have a few drinks or whatever. That hasn't been determined yet. We also have to take into account where we're going to put a trash enclosure. That hasn't been taken into account yet. Um, but uh, I think with this green space right here being in the center of the neighborhood, this particular part of the neighborhood anyway, and sidewalks being all around it, being on the Eastern Trail, um, this area over here really can't be built on in terms of building, but you know, as I said, we do have a landscape easement right over there that we could take a look at if that's something that the board thinks there should be, um, be more of. The neighborhood itself is designed to be uh, there's some sidewalks on both sides of, of the streets coming down through here. There's several green areas, park areas within the neighborhood itself. Um, this site right here is just under two acres, so it's, it's not a big site. Um, but uh, we definitely want it to be dense. We don't want it to, um, we want it to be dense purposely and to look dense purposely. It does have a certain urban feel to it, I would say. It's funny you should say that because um, where I actually got the idea from was um, uh, I was at a Red Sox game, and um, of course parking is tough down there. Mm -hmm. So you usually have to park across the street out behind where the old McDonald's used to be. And, uh, you know, those buildings are, um, you know, four stories. Um, some are five mostly four stories, they're brick, uh, but there's on-street parking, but you can be right over there and you're immediately in a neighborhood, but yet um, you can walk one block to the whatever it is, southeast, west, or north, I don't know, and clearly you're in a different uh, element. So that's where I, uh, that's why I purposely wanted to have buildings that kind of mimic that um, and have the on-street parking. But I want it to be kind of urban in, in nature, but, um, but have a, uh, a softer feel, you know, you, you, and I think this accomplishes that. Well, uh, again, conceptually, I, I like the idea. It, it, I think, of course, uh, the challenges will be to um, leave enough space to appropriate landscape and to take care of the issues that you mentioned, um, snow removal, trash pickup those kinds of things, but um, I can't add anything uh, more to, uh, to what I've already said. I will attest to the fact that Cary does have a long history of building high quality uh, developments and um, this concept here suggests to me that this is uh, going to follow right along those lines. Uh, that, um, that one building, Cary, that you said that may or may not be a part of this plan, um, did you want to elaborate further on that or did you have any ideas as to what that might be? Sure. Um, we also plan on having, um, uh, I'll tell you a few other things too. We're going to have power stations for electric cars. Mm -hmm. uh, we're trying to be progressive. Uh, there will be people who will have electric cars that will, that will live here. Um, those kind of people aren't really down on their luck or, uh, you know, those are <coughs> conscious decisions that they're making uh, in their lives and, um, and whatnot. So we'll have charging stations. We'll have uh, we're going to have a dog uh, washing area, and uh, something that's really uh, become a big issue is um, is package packages um, and where to uh, store them and who takes care of them. Some of the big apartment REITs in this country have actually um, said no; they're not going to take uh, care of them anymore. And there's been a lot of um, there's been a lot of um, pushback from the, the residents that, you know, feel they pay a lot of rent. And uh, uh, so we're looking at that as being uh, something that's maybe more multi-purpose. 
Um, also, we want to have a uh, an area that um, we um, that will have Wi-Fi, um, fireplace, lounge area, a Keurig setup. So somebody again, if they want to get out and go over and you know sit in a more kind of different atmosphere. So it might be reserved for more like you know a, a community service kind of area where it receives mail, uh, uh, provides maybe lounging opportunities, maybe even small retail. Uh, no retail. We are actually looking at another. Uh, that brings up another point. We had originally envisioned Building G as having uh, maybe a coffee shop or something on the ground floor, but the parking. We didn't want to have. We didn't want to have a bunch of parking around it just for it and try and design around it. We're looking at uh, at the site across the street from that as uh, something that we'll come back to the board with, and. Um, uh, where we can do something that's along the lines of a uh, cafe, coffee shop, and uh, you know, possibly a tapas um, uh, arrangement in the evening, from like 5:30 to 10 o'clock or something like that. But uh, but Building H, um, it's not necessarily going to be the uh, lounge area, I would say yet, but it's at least going to be an area where uh, FedEx, UPS, Postal Service can drop off what will ultimately be many, many uh, boxes on a daily basis that people can um, have that's safe out of the weather and that they can go and, and pick up. Um, online retailing has just gone right straight through the stratosphere. So sure. that's something that we're, we realize there's a need for it. So we're going to have to give something up and it looks like uh, that's probably the proper spot for it. But it will be architecturally um, appealing to compatible with the rest. Yes, absolutely. It's not just going to be a, you know, just because of its use isn't going to. Yeah, it'll probably be nicer than than what you'd expect. Okay. So you tend to want to do that. All right. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Nick. Sure. <clears throat> just um, I like the design elements of it. It's, it's nice. Um, quick question though on behind building A. Um, does that, can you on the larger map show me what that property line abuts? I think I know which way it's oriented, but I just want to make sure. Oriented to the northeast towards Black Point Road. Okay, so that's that property line right there. Yep. Now, um, what's, what is on that property right now? Is it another development similar to that? Um, and, and I'll tell you where I'm going with it before we get too far into the weeds. Um, I didn't know if buffering, more buffering might be appropriate on that property line, basically because you're against a neighboring property. That, that was going to be my one comment at this point, but not to get too far into it, but that was, that was where it was going. So. Okay. Um, we, uh, this, uh, this has seven oak trees, really large oak trees up here, and uh, we developed this property around 2000. area, but we maintained a right of way coming down through and we maintained an easement, landscape easement rights down here uh, so that we could make sure that you know, something that we didn't agree with was, was done over here that would impact this. Um, if the, uh, the town wants to see some buffering there, uh, that's, that's fine. One of the things that we do uh, plan on doing, and it's not properly shown here though, is we do plan on pushing snow. We'll remain on our property, <coughs> but uh, these are areas where we can actually push snow um, and either group it up over here. Actually, these will be pulled back a little bit so we can push it over here. Areas where we won't have curbing and, and have an area to push snow for snow conditions. So, uh, to the extent that we have trees over here, trees over here, trees over here. We can do that. This building right here would be a very attractive building. Um, there's not anybody that's impacted um, right here. All the all the uh, living is, is basically from the ten up. So, um, is that area set aside as conservation, or is it actually developable? No, it's not developable because we used the density that it had and put all the density up top here and left this open down here uh, 
for a reason to be open space rather than fill it with buildings. Okay. But you can't do any more development on it. It's not conservation. Uh, we have an easement over it for landscaping. So we have a say as far as what takes place over here. Okay. Um, and then my next question is, um, if we can bring back that sketch that's on the floor back up. Just a, just a quick question logistically. It looks like you have uh, between buildings F and G, they, they're offset a little bit. You see the intersections just offset a little bit. Is there a reason for that? Do you have some, I mean, why not make it a kind of a four-way stop rather, you know, rather than what appears, at least on the sketch plan, to be just slightly offset? Yeah, we do that for a reason. We don't, uh, we don't like, uh, you'll notice in our development, nothing is uh, aligned. We do that for a reason. Um, like this proposed road going through here is offset from here. You don't want to terminate your street with another street. You want to terminate your street with a building or a feature or a sculpture or a statue or whatever. That was with old planning uh, design. Um, conventional planning wisdom is to line everything up. And that's also why <laughs> um, I think that's it for me. Thanks, Thanks. Nick. Roger. All right, thank you. Um, I, I I would uh, I just have some general um, observations. I, I I think everything you're doing looks fine to me. I think you've done a wonderful job so far in the development. But just for the purposes of general information, um, you mentioned earlier that that top section is going to be. Um, Phase nine. I'm phase nine or phase eight. Originally, uh, it was phase nine, but the phasing has changed to where it's actually now called phase eight. But it is an undeveloped area that eventually will be developed. Yeah. What are you What are you building? Right. What phase are you in now? We're in phase three right now. Okay. And and this um, this proposal, it, what phase would that be? It was originally known as phase eight. Um, this blue one right here. Um, you know, I guess we'd call it 3A or however you. I'm not. I'm not sure. Maybe Angela can answer it, but I'm not sure how phasing uh, really becomes all that important no. in a, in a well, development. I would, agree, I would agree with that, but um, just for the general public's information, I, I mean, this is a, a big project and it's phased to go over a number of years, and I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of curiosity out there with the public as to. Um, how this is progressing along and what phase you're working on now. And, and uh, as I said, I think you've done a, a nice job. I notice um, in your total plan, you have your multifamily and you have your retail and everything down there close to, to the Black Point section of the plan. Mm -hmm. um, was that designed that way to considering potential traffic would be going out on the Black Point Road instead of going through the development? Um, no, not not necessarily. Uh, one thing that we are limited to is uh, is we're we're limited to 5,000 square feet of uh, mercantile space that we can have within the uh, development. That's both uh, from our state traffic movement permit and also uh, through the town's approval. I think the retail component is mercantile component, office component uh, is really. Um, being considered more as something that is neighborhood-based. Um, one thing that uh, the tra state of Maine didn't want to really see was, you know, put a sign up on Black Point Road and Eastern Road with an arrow that says, you know, um, you know, oral surgery, you know, that way or whatever, for lack of a better example. But these particular uh, set of Homes right here are right now we're we're proposing them to be uh, live works. So the ground floor would be some form of mercantile um, yoga studio, architectural uh, firm, lawyer's office, uh, and then hopefully the the uh, hopefully the the uh, the occupant of the of the ground floor would live above. So essentially they could have it all in one spot. Um, Will there be traffic coming in from uh, other areas? Probably, but um, we're um, this area right here is uh, is also outlined for 
for some type of um, commercial use. There used to be a train station down the corner because this is a more railroad bed. So, you know, that would be a building there that we would build to look maybe like an old train station and see if someone would want to lease it. But again, it would not be something that we'd look as uh, creating a lot of trip generation. It'd be something that would be um, um, just a, a space where people need to have an office. Um, and, uh, and similar to uh, that with, um, with um, non-residential, um, there's actually a few other areas uh, I'm not shown right here, but um, there was the possibility that uh, this lot right here could have it. Uh, a few other lots could have it, but again, 5,000 square feet. If we take just the, the ground floor of those particular um, live works, it's 4,800 square feet. So we've maxed it out right there, and we don't really anticipate coming back to the board and asking for an increase in that. Okay. Um, actually, my wife and I have driven through the neighborhood, you know, every few months to just see what's going on, and we've been through there in the winter as well, and. Um, if I recall, when this was first planned, there was not supposed to be on, on street parking for most of it. Is that correct? Right. Um, is that enforced? Because we've been down there when there's been parking on the street and, and also in the winter, as I'm sure you're aware, with the snow banks and everything, it can be pretty narrow down there. Yeah. Um, that is, there's been a fair amount of discussion about that in the last few months, and most of that is contractor parking. And uh, as you're building, as you're going through the building process, and we regularly tell uh, contractors down there, you know, you can't park on the street. Fire truck needs to get down through there. They go down through there fairly regularly. Um, and uh, but some contractors, you don't, you know, it, framers are there for a while, but then when some of the other subs come in, you know, they're not there at the beginning. They're there later on. But everybody who lives down there along this area here, uh, they pretty much understand that and, and I think abide by it. It's really just if there's uh, construction going on, new construction, or if maybe somebody's got some remodeling being done inside their home or whatnot. Um, but we've sent out emails to the, to the neighborhood uh, to let them know about that and we do the best we can to, we have sold some lots to some other builders um, and uh, have told them to tell their trades and you know, whenever we see vehicles on the street, we also tell them the same. So I think if you drive down through there in the next few days, you'd, I have, there's, it's been, it's been complied with for the most part. Okay. Recently. Uh, I have a question. Maybe it's um, more directed to Jay, but in the material you referred to um, the issue 30 by a truck? Yep. All right. Now, is that similar in size to a school bus, say, you know? Um, Do I've you know? I believe it is we, in San Angelo, not or it? As part of the approval, we had to uh, we had to uh, meet all those uh, wheelbase lengths, and okay. um, we had to provide a a route for the school buses, a route for the trash trucks, and make sure that the fire trucks could get through everything. And it all does work. Okay, all right. There's some areas that are tight, and there's some areas in the alleys that where there'll be cobblestones uh, that will go beyond the pavement. There's also an area right over here where there's cobblestones that will be put in place uh, so you don't have so much width, so you don't have, uh, so you don't have as much asphalt uh, showing and people would tend to stay on the pavement, but those are put in place so that if, you know, the school bus or the fire truck or the trash truck need to, uh, need more room, they can, they can use those areas. Okay. Um, I, I I think the architecture is terrific on what you what you plan to do, and especially A, I think it'll look great from Black Point Road. Um, so I, d I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Thanks, Roger. Susan. Thank you. Hi. It's been Hi there. A long time. It has been. How have you been? Well, yeah. Same um, here. I think it's important to remember that this is a village concept. It was designed as a village concept. It was designed to have narrow streets. It was designed to um, have people walk. Um, the open space was designated essentially Eastern Trail. That's one of the big reasons people 
wanted to come because it's built right in to living there. Um, the architecture has, I'm constantly amazed at how many different ways there are to say housing and what you're doing. And I go through quite frequently because it's always a treat. Um, I don't think we need any buffering. We got that great big pond and all that open space between what, what's there and, and Black Point Road. Uh, I'm not concerned about the density of the apartment buildings themselves either. And it, it, you're, I'm with you completely in that we need as much of this sort of thing as we can get. I do remember that the traffic study was done with the development of this in mind. So I'm not concerned about the traffic. Um, I think you have a pretty good handle on what you can do with non-residential before you have a, a problem. I do think that we need to not necessarily do anything about it, but just be aware that when this is, when this particular section is completed, there will be more traffic coming in off Black Point Road. It's closer to Black Point Road than it is to Commerce, is it Commerce Drive? <laughs> I get so confused. Yes. Um, and so people who live there and are coming from, let's say, Cape or South Portland or whatever are going to come in off Black Point Road. And I think that the town needs to be aware of keeping sort of an eye on the traffic situation and whether we, if we do, when do we need to signalize that. Um, just putting it out there, I don't think it's anything to worry about today, but we're a planning board. So just thinking about what future impacts might be. Um, I. I think that if it's done the way, if it continues to be done the way you're doing it, people are not using this as a cut through. It takes a while to go through Eastern Village. It's not a cut through. I'm not concerned about that. But, but the fact that this density is being put in close to Black Point, I think is going to increase the amount of exits and entrances. And as we all know, things are not easy getting down to the Eastern Trail from Oak Hill as it now stands. So just a, uh, not a heads up, but just to be sure that we know that it probably will happen. The stormwater has already been sized, so we don't have to worry about any of that. As far as I can see, what you're really looking for is, I don't know what, what, if it's what you're looking for, but it seems to me that there's really not much to say until you, we get to the actual uh, presentation of your project. I'm a little confused about the difference between the 12 units <coughs> and um, going, going up to or coming back to the number of units depending on whether this process that is going through the, going through the town ordinance committee now comes through. If it doesn't come through in time, it's going to be fine with you to just stick with it as it is. That's correct. Okay, so you're going to do this according to just whatever is the standing ordinance at the time. Right. Okay. That would be my only concern. I think it looks great, and um, I look forward to having you come back. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Robin? Thanks, Corey. <coughs> it sounds like you've um, put some thought into the, um, the development of this with um, the Long Range Planning Committee and others. Um, and it looks like some complete streets concepts have, have been incorporated into this. Um, is that true? Um, we've worked with the Long Range Planning Committee recently to ask that the eight unit maximum per building be brought to 12 unit per building like they've done in the TVC zone okay. in the last uh, year. Okay. That is, um, that's the, for the most part, the discussion we've had with Long Range Planning. Okay. So have there been any complete streets concepts been incorporated into this? I'm not sure I know what you mean by complete streets. How about low impact development? Have you got any low impact development principles incorporated in this? Low impact in terms of stormwater, low impact in terms Treating of... Treating on site, like, like minimizing the amount of disturbance and treating stormwater on site and, and minimizing what vegetation gets taken down and the like, or is, has there been any, any thought, I guess, into low impact development incorporation? We did do as much as we could back when the project got approved in 2007. Um, and the, the, um, 
the way that this is designed is um, some, some of our laws are constantly changing. Um, but this uh, pond has a uh, gravel bench around it. It sheet flows over into an area that is, uh, is, is meant to be a wetland uh, area. And then from there, out the control structure goes out. Other than that, everything is point discharge as far as mm -hmm. um, catch basins and whatnot. The type of street design that the town uh, approved and wanted was uh, sidewalks, esplanade, curbing, street, and Got it. so there's not really any sheet flow um, opportunity over here. We could take a look at maybe doing some of that over here. Um, the direction for the sheet flow would, would need to be in that direction there. Um, there currently is a ditch that needs to be dealt with right along this area here. Mm -hmm. um, it's, when we built this pond, the same condition existed down here. And if you go down here and take a look at it now, you'll see that you know it's, it's gentle, it's smooth, there's a structure, and it all blends in, whereas up in here, if you take your eyes off the road for a second and try and tune into a station, you're liable to drive right into the ditch and literally your car will go six feet down. Is there any traffic protection? That's There's nothing right now okay. in existence over here. Um, we've had discussions with the town about it. Uh, this particular road beyond where we come in, it's actually all owned by IFNW. In the fisheries and wildlife, and but we have an easement to uh, to where we come in, and then once we improve the road from there out to Black Point Road, then we turn it over to the town, then it will become a public way. But we have no rights uh, beyond that in terms of even correcting this situation. We did over here because it was part of the pond. But I've had several discussions with Dan Bacon sure. about this particular situation right here. No, that's fine. Um, Carrie, I'm just wondering, is it, are we past the point of return to, to think about not concentrating the stormwater into a pond? Are we, have we passed that page? We've passed okay. That page. All right. I guess I, I just, uh, in general, it, it seems like a... Go ahead. Well, the only thing I was going to say is, yeah, the train has definitely left the station a long time ago on that. But this pond was not just digging a hole and letting water flow into it. No, I mean, I'm aware. It's, yeah. it's what about future efforts? Are there, are there, is there an opportunity for future phases to incorporate low impact development or complete streets? Yes. Okay. We own this parcel, we own this parcel. Um, there's a wetland out here. There's an opportunity probably to connect up this wetland, connect it, and then maybe keep the development up to this side which would be, I mean, there's, yeah, there's opportunities here and over there, for sure. Um, it, would, it would require amending the street acceptance uh -huh. standard that we have for down here, but, uh -huh. um, but I, uh, I understand what you're talking about, and I, and, uh, I think that any time you can uh, sheet flow rather than point discharge, uh, um, it's a good thing. So does DEP. But at the same time, when you're trying to build uh, something that's, that's, like Susan mentioned, a village, and it's dense, um, those opportunities also start to get sure. more difficult to do. It just seems like we're, we're very close to watersheds where the built environment has to go back and retrofit. And a lot of the times, development and redevelopment is the best place to incorporate some of these um, low-impact development measures and, and the like. So. Um, thank you. Thanks. So, um, like um, my fellow board members in general, I'm um, definitely on board with the concept here. I don't have any particular issues with um, the, the notion of slightly increasing the density. Um, I had the opportunity to be part of some of that discussion, long range planning, a few weeks ago, uh, whenever that was fairly recently. Um, and I'm glad we've gotten clarification that you, your intent is to, when you do come back for actual site plan approval with a full-fledged uh, application, that you will go with whatever the prevailing zoning is at that point. 
Yeah, um, we'll have a matrix that will have it all spelled out and laid out in a understandable so, manner. Great. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not directly privy to where exactly that stands in the in the process right now, but um, I, I think we're pretty clear on what the what the approach will be. Um, and definitely glad to hear that you've met with the neighbors a couple times. Um, it's great to, to have to have that engagement, and um, you know I don't have to tell you it's been a long process, and it's been hard to believe it's been almost 10 years. Um, maybe it's not hard for you to believe, but um, since the original approval and. It is great to see the vision coming together, and you know we've obviously been through a little bit of a roller coaster economically, and, and it's um, good to see things kind of coming together in these different components. Um, and you know, one of the part of the challenge of that kind of long life cycle is that there are certain things that change, and some people either forget or, or maybe not familiar with what some of the original intent was. Um, so I think it's good to, to sort of get everybody up to the same speed terms of context and, and history. Um, uh, I'll look forward to seeing all the all the details that, that uh, are in typically included with a full-fledged application, including some of the uh, parking and traffic details. Um, I'm not particularly concerned about trip generation um, for this, and again, it was always intended to be a multifamily component. Um, in terms of uh, uh, again, uh, along the lines of the uh, the village concept, um, conceptually, I'm I'm fine with on-street parking in, in the apartment areas. It's consistent with that whole that whole idea. Um, similarly, with street alignment, um, I, I understand what you're doing there, and, and I think both in terms of, of uh, enhancing architectural interest and, frankly, um, you know, traffic calming is kind of a, a cliche, but I think it's undeniable that by having having the streets offset a bit, it discourages excessive speeds and, and the temptation to cut through, and I think it also just is consistent with with that overall philosophy that, that you're pursuing, so I don't have any issues with that. Um, I'd be interested, among other things, to see what, if anything, develops in terms of this, um, you know, the building that's somewhat in play that could be some sort of a community building or at least a uh, distribution point for for certain things. Um, I think anything that could serve as a as a focal point um, would be nice. And then similarly, although it may not be um, something that we see immediately, um, again in the, in the along the lines of seeing the whole concept come together, I'll look forward to seeing eventually uh, some commercial or retail component because uh, again that was always part of that village <coughs> concept and. Clearly, there's a sense to be a little bit of a chicken and egg um, dilemma there when it comes to that, when you're trying to create the critical mass <laughs> to, to make that work. Um, and on the other hand, it could be a nice amenity. So um, I agree with Ms. Oglis that in terms of um, buffering, I, I personally don't see the need for any additional buffering from that neighboring property. There's a natural buffer there, and including a bit of an elevation change. Um, so I, I'm not particularly concerned there. Um, and um, yeah, I think uh, I think that pretty well covers it um, between what my colleagues have said and and what I just reviewed. So we'll uh, look forward to seeing the next step. And um, is there anything more that you'd like from us in terms of feedback for sketch review purposes, or feel like you have a pretty good feel for it? I think I have a pretty good feel for it, and that was what I was looking for. I will talk to uh, the engineer that I'll be using on this about um, any way that we can incorporate, uh, if we can, some type of uh, low impact uh, with respect to Lot 118. Um, and um, I've got notes written down from others' concerns, and uh, we'll be back as soon as we can. We want to get it built as soon as we can. and. We'll do a good job. Right. Thank you Appreciate for your uh, comments. Thank you. Item number six, Maine Seafood Ventures LLC requests a site plan amendment review for 240 Slash 350 Pine Point Road, Assessor's Map, R88, Lot 8. Dave? <coughs> 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the applicant is before the board uh, to expand an existing building with a loading dock um, at the property just mentioned, 340 Pine Point Road. The property is within the TBC 4 district as well as the Shoreland um, Overlay District, so those provisions need to be considered and applied uh, as such. Um, the addition also requires uh, board consideration through the site plan amendment process, so the site plan review, uh, review criteria. Um, so in terms of the shoreland zone, that is, uh, TVC4 has a bit of an unusual space and bulk standard regard setbacks. There's sort of a variable setback, if you will. Um, it allows for a reduction of a setback to the resource down to 25 feet, provided that that setback, that 25 foot area be vegetated. If that area is not vegetated, then the 75 foot setback governs. So in this case, based on what the applicant's proposing, there's a 75 foot setback that they need to hold to the um, resource. Given that, that 75 foot setback, and there's really sort of three sides of this property, is, uh, or at least a portion of three sides of the property, is uh, uh, controlled by the 75 foot setback, makes this a wholly non-conforming structure. <laughs> in that, Non-conforming structures can be expanded through planning board review process, and really there's two critical criteria that need to be met. One, that the expansion not exceed 30% of the structure, um, and then the other one, that the expansion not encroach any closer to the edge of the resource than existing. So they basically need to hold whatever setback that non-conforming is at. So those are two issues that the applicant will need to address um, moving forward. The TVC4, the standard uh, most principally that the board and applicant will need to work through there is TVC4 talks about when there is a property that is subject to site plan review, that property needs to meet the expectations for um, uh, on-site parking. TVC4 typically seats or does seek on-site parking to be at the side or rear of the building. Um, however, the TVC4 recognizes that there are lots that that may not be a practical alternative, so the board will need to determine if through this site plan review process um, whether that's a practical alternative or not. Um, and if you find that it's not, you may waive that standard. Then finally, in terms of the site plan review criteria, staff just really identified this is the addition of a loading dock, so it is a overall a fairly small addition to an existing business, um, but just really taking a look at opportunities for screening from the public way, which is typically sought through our design standards. Um, so those are the main elements that I've raised. Um, I will note that um, subsequent to staff comments going out, I did have an opportunity to sit with the applicants and I think they have some notions as to how they're going to uh, address some of the concerns that were raised in staff's previous comments, particularly about the setback concerns. So with that, I turn back to you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Jay. And I'll turn it over to Mr. Allen. Great. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Lee Allen with Northeast Civil Solutions, representing Main Seafood Ventures. Um, what we're talking about here is building number 340 Pine Point Road. There's also a number 350 Pine Point Road. Um, they're all on the same property, but we're talking about 340. It's a seafood processing facility. They process lobster, they shell the lobster, and then package and freeze it and distribute it all over the world. Business is very good to the point where they're having um, problems distributing the stuff out the door and getting it into the trucks, hence the reason for <laughs> requesting three loading dock bays. So our original proposal was to put in a, a concrete loading dock four feet high so you could back three trucks up to it. As Jay mentioned, there's some confusions and things in making sure we are following the right zoning piece of the zoning law and the Shoreland Ordinance versus the TVC-4. So what we're now proposing this is at a larger scale, is a two-bay loading dock. And what happens is a concrete pad right in this area and a concrete pad back here. Those both count as, by definition, a structure. So we are not extending any further to this side of the resource. We're not extending anywhere closer to that side of the resource. And anywhere closer to this side of the resource. We're all within the bounds of those structures. So I think from a shoreland perspective, 
we meet all the intents of the rules of the shoreland zone. Um, the other piece of this is the lot coverage as part of the shoreland zone. Um, we can't expand more than 30 percent. Um, based on this, and there's already structure there, we're kind of just a small little section in here. That's actually an increase of 2.3 percent of area, which is significantly less than the 30 percent. Um, the other part of this is we're requesting a waiver from the TVC4 for parking. In this case, most of the parking occurs over in this area. Occasionally, there's some cars parked along the front. A lot of the people that work here are bused in from Portland by the, um, by the owner. So we think this, we're not going to change the use, the number of people working here, that's not going to change. This is strictly trying to get product in and out the door easier and more efficiently. Um, I believe there's a written waiver request in there. I can certainly go over it if you'd like, but I think that uh, the narrative spells it out. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Uh, before we go to the board, there's the opportunity for any public comment, if anyone out there is interested. OK, seeing none, we will go to the board. And uh, would you like to start, Robin? I just have a clarification and I wonder, Jay, if maybe you could provide it. Um, <clears throat> does this, because of the update, do they have to meet the new lighting standards or no? Um, no, I would say through the site plan review process. Um, that is typically something the board looks mm -hmm. at. So I think that's uh, okay. you know, yeah, the board's interest in taking a look at those details. Oh, okay. So Lee, did you get, happen to take a look at the lighting mm -hmm. standards? We are not proposing any changing in lighting. Okay. So there's no addition or subtraction. It's okay. whatever's there is, is there. Sounds good. Um, on the plan, uh, I don't know. It doesn't sound good to me, but <laughs> <laughs> um, it is what it is. Um, I didn't happen to see where the um, limits of construction were noted on the plan set that I had. So um, am I looking at the, can you, can you I can, sort I of can point to where I can illustrate where those are. Yeah. The, the parking lot is gravel. This slash line right here indicates the limits of the gravel. So what we have is <coughs> trucks pulling in this way, backing up, we'll have two here. Okay. In order to pull out, they do the maneuver, come out. So we need this with the gravel. Okay. So there is some grading. In order to achieve the four feet difference, so when they back up, the back of their trailer is level with the loading dock. There's some minor grading that's going to take place in this area. All here. Other than the regaining of the gravel and this construction, um, can you can you tell me what the green is on your plan? Sure. Oh, so, as part of this, the applicant recognizes that there could be more done. This is grass area that is kind of living, kind of not living. He's proposing to plant uh, Virginia rose. Um, it's instead of Rosa rugosa, which is considered invasive. So he's intending to plant rose in here too act as a buffer between the marsh and the gravel area. What um, enhancement does that provide? Um, it provides erosion. The root system of rose is very dense and it will hold the, the soil together very well. So it's an area where we're creating a kind of a shallow swale. So any water, any rainwater, it will wash out towards marsh this way. This mm -hmm. is one way to make sure so that isn't eroding. Why just that small area? That's where the water's getting focused. So we have water running this way, water running this way, and it funnels this way into a swale, and it runs out. OK. And what about the parking lot that, that's on the, is there any vegetation proposed in the buffer? or? It's going to remain just as it is. All our work is focused right in this area. OK. Um, I noticed that on your erosion control, um, let's see. Uh, your, yeah, your um, plan set for erosion and sanitation control notes, um, that a lot of them are still referencing the 2003 uh, DEP BMP manual, and that was updated in 2015. Um, so I had a quick question on the hay bales sure. that were put, uh, because when you look at that page where it says your hay bale detail, it says the bales should be placed in a row with ends tightly abutting. I guess I just want to 
Will this project have a pre-construction meeting? Yes. 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 Okay. I would just ask that you work with staff, I guess, on yeah. updating that since it's an old reference to a 2003 yeah. manual. Yeah. Um, could I have the parking lot um, sort of waiver explained one more time, Jay? Sure. Um, so the TVC4 yep. seeks uh, for a new site plan, seeks to have parking in the side or rear of a site. Okay. It goes on further to say that when there's a site that doesn't meet that standard and that site comes before the planning board for site plan review, this is in the zoning ordinance now, um, but it specifically references when they're before the board for site plan review that the property should be brought into conformance, essentially relocate parking to the side or rear. Okay. goes on to then say, however, the planning board has the ability to waive the standard if based on the site characteristics, size of the lot, slope, what have you, the board can grant a waiver. Um, so. Okay. Um, and the, 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 uh, the stormwater, how does the stormwater run off the parking lot? Right now, well, most of it she flows into the marsh. There's, there's some grass area of the marsh indicated by this green line. Okay. And it, it runs off and sheets into the marsh. So that's the parking lot in question. It's not the parking lot it's between 340 and 350 ready. It, it's easier to see on the bigger yeah. view. So. I mean, the parking here, most people park here. Yeah. Occasionally there's some that park here. That's it. There's okay. There's usually no more than eight or ten vehicles associated with this. Yeah. I, I just feel like, um, I guess what I'm trying to get at here is, if, if the, the buffer enhancement of the roses, I mm -hmm. actually really love it. Mm -hmm. um, but to get sort of like the parking lot waiver, I would suggest that maybe we compromise on having that buffer of roses extended a little more sure. to provide some more erosion sedimentation control from the parking lot sure. and other areas that will potentially be impacted in that 20, you know, in that 25 foot mm -hmm. zone. Um, Ms. Saunders, just so I yes. understand for point of clarity, you're really talking now between extending sort of between buildings 340 um, and 350? Am I exactly under? where his finger's okay. going, is right. along the, the yep. buffer area okay. there. Yep, yep, you got it. All right. Just wanted to be sure I was yep. clear. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Susan? I don't have anything. I think it's um, worked out just fine, and yay, we're busy and we're doing well, and Anything we can do to make that that much easier, <coughs> I'm in favor of it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Roger? Um, I basically don't have any uh, anything to add either. I, it's pretty cut and dry to me. It's You're not basically doing anything to the building. You're not adding more people. You're not adding more parking. Correct. Uh, all you're trying to do is make it a little easy to do business. Correct. Um, and because of the um, configuration of the property, um, I, you know, I, I would be in favor of the waiver for the parking. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Nick? Yeah, I'm in favor of the waiver for the parking as well. Uh, real quick, just making sure that we're asked to approve this tonight. It would be based on the two dock, not Co the correct. three that were correct. shown in the packets tonight. Correct. And that's staff will take care of that. That's the only one that, yeah. that meets right. the ordinance. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Mike? Yeah, a question for Jay. <coughs> If, if this is non-conforming as it exists today? The building is non-conforming, that's correct. So it, do, it doesn't have to go through the ZBA process? No, so so what the, the shoreland zoning ordinance mm -hmm. is, is a bit different than the um, sort of underlying typical zoning. So what this says is when you're non-conforming to the shoreland zoning setback, it's the planning board that okay. reviews that. Um, so if they were, so yeah, that's the, that's the difference. So I see, okay. okay. Very good, thank you. Typically, I'll just say, typically when people are non-conformed to the shoreland, there's also other non-conformities that they're up against, and so there is sort of this bit of who goes first, but in this case, it's just plain. Okay, board. excellent, thank you. <coughs> well, uh, toward that end, then, I have no uh, no issues with the uh, presentation and with the illustration of the uh, of the plan as you have in front of us here, and I'm also in favor of the waiver of the parking. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Mike. Um, I also am, am fine with this. I don't have any issues with it. Um, seems pretty straightforward. Um, I, I would like to second uh, Ms. Saunders' request to 
uh, extend that vegetated buffer uh, strip and um, our faithful staff person here is adding that to the list of uh, conditions for approval and um, unless anyone has any objections I'll go ahead and, and add thank that you. so thank you um, I'm also fine with the uh, the waiver on the parking um, given the, the site constraints and um, you know bottom line here is pretty straightforward we're not making anything any more non-conforming mm -hmm. we're not getting any closer to the resource and um, we can uh, move forward I just have a question for the applicant is the rear of the lot as we're sort of talking about it is that east or north I can't I'm trying to find north arrow on this plan just so I reference the so the it's area north, it's northeast northeast all right <laughs> I'm gonna go with east <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> so with that, I'd like to put a motion forward. I move to conditionally approve the application of Maine Seafood Ventures for the site plan amended plan of property located at 340 Pine Point Road. The approval finds that the proposed building expansion is consistent with the shoreland overlay requirements in that the structure is not being expanded by more than 30 percent and that the expansion is no closer to the edge of the resource. Further, I find that the relocation of existing parking spaces and front yard is impractical due to site characteristics and hereby waive the off-street parking provision of the TVC4 for this application. The following conditions. Number one, prior to issuance of a building permit, the plan set is to be revised to address items raised in staff comments related to depicting the 75-foot setback, coordinating the fencing detail, and parking requirements matrix. Number two, prior to issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall coordinate a pre-construction meeting with the senior planner. And number three, the applicant shall enhance the vegetated buffer along the east side of the property. Final details to be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Second. A second. Any discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck. Is Nick. Uh, item number seven, Alpha Management, uh, Arlberg Ski and Surf Shop, was actually tabled at the request of the applicant. Probably should have noted that at the top. Uh, so we won't be doing that one. Uh, item number eight, Matthew Chamberlain requests a subdivision review for 216 Pine Point Road, Assessor's Map, U25, Lot 3. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As just noted, uh, this application is <coughs> before you for a residential subdivision within the R2 district. This is part of our uh, this is the preliminary review process. Subdivision is sort of a two-step process, a preliminary and, and final review. Um, the applicant, as I just noted, is here seeking a, is actually three, a three-lot subdivision, really the creation of two new lots. Um, on the property, there exists a, uh, a, uh, currently a two-family um, family structure or structures on um, one of the on the lot um, so in terms of staff comments um, sort of the, in terms of planning comments the main item we have for board to consider is in terms of traffic management uh, given that Pine Point Road is a, a fairly busy arterial is consideration of a, a shared driveway uh, warranted here um, and, and how would that um, be implemented if so um, we also have some comments that uh, the applicant is really seeking based on, you know, this is a, um, he's looking for direct access right off Pine Point Road, so there's very limited infrastructure with this uh, proposal in terms of typically we see a roadway or what have you, but here it's, you know, just utilizing the existing roadway, so the applicant has, is seeking to really take, take a, a look at uh, drainage and erosion control measures on a lot by lot basis as they come in for development. And so um, the engineers looked at that issue and had some comments with regards to um, considering stormwater management and erosion control measures as and if uh, the lots are developed down the road. Um, one other item that we just want to note is that there will be services. So in terms of infrastructure, there are services that will be tied into uh, the uh, public water and public sewer within Pine Point Road. And again, uh, just detailing appropriate measures for ensuring that the cuts uh, in the uh, public infrastructure are limited and uh, carefully controlled uh, for the town's standards. Um, outside of that, staff has no other uh, <coughs> comments. 
Thanks, Jay. I'll turn it over to the applicant. Hi, good evening. My name is Matthew Chamberlain. Appreciate your time tonight. Uh, I think Mr. Chase kind of summed it up quite well exactly what we're doing. Uh, it's a total parcel of 2.56 acres. Uh, the density is 20,000 per square feet, uh, per, per lot. Um, we're looking at creating two new lots with the third one having an existing structure on it. It's a uh, 1890s uh, old style home, uh, currently used as a two unit. Um, no road infrastructure is being proposed. Uh, we'll be bringing water from the other side of the road uh, and we'll be boring that so we will not be trenching across the road. And sewer is located just a few feet off of the same side as the, uh, the parcel in question. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, be happy to answer any questions that uh, uh, anyone has. Okay, thank you. Um, first, if there's anyone, the public, who has any comments, come on up. No takers. Susan. Yeah. Do you have a copy of what I have a copy of? I believe I do. Unfortunately, I forgot to bring a board with me, so I have. Uh, okay, well, if you just make sure that we're talking about the same thing, mm -hmm. okay? I'm looking at um, your project narrative, and it says two unit structure currently existing on the site. One, two, or three? Which one has got the current? Uh, lot number w lot number one. And is that where it says down down where it joins Pine Point Road? It says one half story wood frame. Is that the building? That is correct. And that's going to remain right where it is. That is correct. Is there going to be something else put on route on on um, lot one? Uh, no. Okay. So the garage and the ha one half story building will be all that's going to be part of route of um, lot one. I'm a little confused as to why the dotted line, which I think delineates the actual lots, am I right, doesn't come down to include the present house? So the dotted line, as I understood that, so the, the, the property boundaries are represented by the longer dash lines. The smaller mm -hmm. dotted line, mm -hmm. I think, as you're referencing, is the building envelope. So that's the okay. front front and side yard setback. So okay. the house on lot one or the structure on lot one is currently a non-conforming house. And it'll remain um, the same. And it's going to remain the same. It's not. The issue we would really have to look at is if they were creating a non-conforming to the side yard setback, well, which okay. they're not doing. Um, I'm so. concerned about future. Yep. I don't know how I can explain my concern about the future, but I don't know. I'm, I'm just concerned that that's a, that's a lot of land with a teeny little house right on Pine Point Road, and what's to keep there to be another attempt later to subdivide that lot? So there I really think isn't any. So, so one of the things, as I understand it, the, the current building is a two-family mm -hmm. building, and so to have a two-family building, the, sh the lot needs to be 40,000 square feet at a minimum in the R2. And as I recall, this is around 41, 2, or 3,000 square 45, feet. 45, yeah, 40,000, 325. Okay, so we okay. have to have all of that land to support the building that's already there. To support there. the building. Now, if that building were to go away and someone wanted to do two single families, say, separate, you know, that the unit. That would be a, that would be a for a different. That would be, they would have to come back and potentially split okay. the slot through a subdivision amendment and the board would look at all the details therein. Right. Which, which at the same time, the lot I'm proposing, lot one, wouldn't have enough road frontage to make that request. Okay. Wouldn't for two houses. Correct. Okay. I'm with you. Yeah. The R2 requires a hundred feet minimum and the existing parcel, okay. uh, as proposed, will have about 144, so I'll be about 60. Five sixty-four feet shy of having okay. two. Thank you. Um, next, just a question on the other side of this diagram. Now or formerly Eleanor Salvatore. Hello. Mm -hmm. um, where is the entrance to Mrs. Salvatore's lot? Is it off Pine Point Road or is it off what will become Lot Three? Uh, lot Three has no bearing on. Uh, has no connection to no. this lot. So her her entrance is off Pine Point Road. I, I, I believe so. No, no, no. I'm sorry. You, no, no. You can come <laughs> up and introduce yourself if you'd like to. Yeah, if you want to make a comment directly. later, that's fine. Okay. okay. 
All right. Um, I needed to know that because at this point, you're showing a curb cut onto Pine Point Road for lot three and lot two. The current property has a uh, U-shaped driveway, so there's currently already two curb cuts. Would you explain to me, since you can't hold it up, to show me where does it come in and where does it go out? Absolutely. Uh, it comes in uh, about 20 feet to the right of the existing structure, the one and a half story. Okay. As it loops through the property and comes back out about 60 feet uh, from the far right pin for lot three. Ms. Hoglis, I'm moving my mouse if you can't quite see it. I think this is the area. It's, it, no, it, I can't, can't it, see that I, either, probably. There, there's, a, there's a break <laughs> here. I found it. Okay, so in between all of that, how far into what will be lot two does it loop the existing road? Uh, approximately, I'll say 65, 70 feet. I'm, okay, I'm, I, obviously, what my concern is one more curb cut onto Pine Point Road. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that it was stated quite well in the um, <coughs> staff comments that traffic management along busy Pine Point Road limiting curb cuts and would a shared driveway between two and three be feasible? I think that this is something that needs to be looked at. We're happy to go with either direction. Uh, upon meeting with uh, Mr. Chase, it, that was part of the discussion. and That would uh, be something that you'd be willing to do? Perfectly fine. Okay. No problem at all. Thank you. And um, the stormwater management being done on a lot by lot basis, I've been hanging around here forever and I've never heard of this before. I'm just checking to make sure that staff feels that this is perfectly doable. Um, you have no planning <laughs> staff does, but I will look to our town engineer who will be the one responsible. Who will tell me whether this is doable because we've never, I mean, am I crazy? Have, have I been sleeping too much? Uh, well, <laughs> I hate to do this to you, but recently this when was something that uh, Foster Farm subdivision, um, oh, the wow. Saratoga Lane, there was two little, two, two lot splits, and this yeah. is very mm -hmm. similar to what was done there. Never mind, Foster <laughs> Farms. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I think at this scale we're talking about two lots, and really at this point we're looking at um, adverse impacts to abutters and looking at it lot by lot at this point they don't know where they're putting the house where the driveway is going okay. things like that and we can get into more detailed I think in a more thorough review um, okay as long as contractor. I do so love the fact that we have such great staff mm -hmm. I remember when this wasn't as clean cut and easy a question so thank you that answers my question and I would assume that that would take me down to the point made by <coughs> staff about um, water service will require a connection to the opposite side. I'm not too sure exactly how that does because if, we're, if it has to go under Pine Point and the trench is going to have to be opened, they'll have to do the two locations at the same, at the same time. Well, he's, he's referring to boring under Pine Point, which actually limits the, the trench area. But with that being said, the water main is actually in Pine Point. So you have to open it up to connect. Mm -hmm. So there will be a patch. It just won't be the whole width of the road. And so you're going to end up with different patches. And my point was, let's try to consolidate that so you have one larger patch that you can smooth, you can make a transition in and out of that. That'll be open more than once. That would be open, hopefully, uh, yeah, for only like two lots once. You can do those services and okay. sub them to the lots. Okay. And not have to get back into Pine Point. I gotcha. Okay. <clears throat> Those are my concerns. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, I don't really, um, as long as I know the engineer has got control of this. Okay, a little concerned about the point of erosion and sediment control measures should be included on individual lot grading. I think that that's fairly obvious. It just needs to be written down, right? Yes, it's the same thing. I just wanted to get through all of the specific details. I want yes, that in writing okay. that comes in. And then the only one that's left to me is, um, well, never mind. We, we discussed that. I'm fine. No other questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Robin? Uh, thank you. Um, <coughs> When is the um, development 
of the, the lot uh, scheduled to happen, or is it not happening yet? The Sorry, the new, once you subdivide, mm -hmm. is there um, an intended schedule for building on mm -hmm. the subdivided lots at this point? No, no, no schedule plans. Okay. So when that happens, you'll work with staff as far as, I'm looking at the last question here about whether or not you'll disturb one acre or no, or not a land. Realistically, we're looking at probably disturbing less than a quarter acre combined between Perfect. the two lots. I have no other questions. But, but definitely agree with Ms. Oglis's comments. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> All set? Mm -hmm. right. Roger. Uh, thanks. Um, I just want to clarify the, um, the driveway situation. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed that it, this property used to be the Windy Knoll Apartments. Th that that's in the LLC. It, it, it used to be the, the Pearson's property, and when he passed away, it, it was inherited, and they quick claimed it over to an LLC for just financial reasons. But there was never any structure there? I mean, the, there's always been a two unit there since it was built in 1890. Oh, that one structure, that's, a, that's what that's called? Correct. Oh, okay. All right. All right. The reason I was asking is regarding that, the two current curb cuts. Mm -hmm. Was there, is there actually a driveway that loops or there is. something similar to a driveway that loops? Th there is. There is a U-shaped driveway that probably runs 180, 200 feet apart okay. from one curb cut to the next. And you don't have a problem with just utilizing that and not have another curb I cut? I would have to relocate the second curb cut to line it up center of between lots two and three, but happy to do that. Okay. Um, I have no other questions. Thanks. Nick? Yeah, I don't have any questions. Um, I'm okay with the waiver for the traffic study. Okay. Thanks. Um, since you've agreed to, to share uh, a driver between lots two and three, mm -hmm. uh, can you provide a way for each occupant of each lot to um, exit their lot head on to, um, to Pine Point? You know, have like an opportunity to Generally, what I would do is I would go 50 feet uh, onto the property, and then they would split left and right, so that that way they're not trying to. You don't have two vehicles trying to exit at the same time. Well, I, yeah, but what I mean what is is that uh, as I enter my um, my home, my garage, my driveway, I want to be able to turn the car around so I can enter onto Pine Point head on instead of backing up down the driveway. <laughs> Each property has enough width that there'll be a turnaround for each uh, driveway uh, in their garage. Because if you're going to do individuals, then you know I think they just do like a T of some sort. So that that same similar. It, this was done down on Holmes Road uh, for six lots where they had three curb cuts. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's it's a very simple process to get it so that each driveway going into the individual house will have a hammerhead on their own actual okay. property to turn around and drive straight out. All right. Very good. Uh, I'm okay with the, uh, w you're asking for a waiver of a traffic study? Okay. I'm okay with that also. No further questions? Thank you. Jay? Um, yeah, just uh, on, on the point that was just made about the waiver of the traffic study, we did ask um, Bill Bray to take a look at this item and just in terms of traffic impact fees, um, given that it is a relatively, you know, two new house lots and we <coughs> have a memorandum to that effect that will okay. be shared and made a condition of approval should the board get to that point. Thanks, Jay. Um, I don't really have that much to add. I think we've covered the few questions that, that were out there. I appreciate the willingness to consider the shared driveway. Um, it was a good question by Mr. Uh, by uh, Mike uh, on the uh, ability to go head first out and good to know that you plan to do uh, hammerheads there. Um, I'm also fine with the waiver uh, from the traffic study. Um, and uh, really with that, um, again, this is just preliminary subdivision approval. And um, based on what I'm hearing from the board, I think we're, we're comfortable with taking that step at this point. So I would move to approve the application of Matthew Chamberlain for the preliminary subdivision plan of Pine Point Heights. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? All in favor? I have a quick question. I'm sorry, how am the discussion end? Was there supposed to be public comment on this? You did it. I, 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 you I did, did throw it out there. Yeah, it was, sorry. It was, <laughs> it was quick. 
I read the room very quickly. So uh, we have a seconded okay. motion. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Item number nine. None such river brewing requests site plan review for 201 Gorham Road, Assessor's Map R55, Lot 34. Ready? Go ahead. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, let's see. As board members will note, this item had been before you uh, two times previously. Once as a sketch plan, I think maybe even going back all the way to 2015, if not early 2016. And then most recently as a formal site plan approval um, or site plan review in February of this year. Um, the applicant has made modifications based on staff comments and, and board comments. Um, and subsequent to their their submission to the board, uh, staff, you will receive comments from planning staff, uh, from Woodard and Curran, from our town engineer, and as recently today, as today, a um, memo from Goral Palmer, our traffic peer reviewer, which I believe you all received. Um, a couple of things that have to note um, when the applicant was last before you, there was discussion about the need for a DOT traffic movement permit. Um, and in our staff comments, we reflect upon how the applicant had been working with DOT to potentially modify the need <coughs> for that based on particular um, uh, counts of a similar business, which I'm sure we'll talk a bit more in detail for you with. Uh, but we did receive a letter from the DOT either Friday or today, which I was able to email along to you that has suggested that at this point a DOT traffic movement permit will not be necessary. Um, so I just wanted to be sure that point is clear. Um, so, uh, you know, I'll obviously receive staff comments, sort of a host of questions on, on a bunch of the details through a site plan review process. Um, just by overview, way of overview, I uh, realized I didn't do that at the outset. The applicant seeking approval for a restaurant and a brewery on property located at 201 Gorham Road, which is in the TVC3 district. Um, so when the applicant was last before you, the, the, the board really seemed to have two main talking points in terms of the site plan review provisions. Those seem focused principally on parking areas and um, whether the proposal sort of met the uh, board's expectations for the proposed use. And the other item had to principal item uh, seemed to be architecture and uh, the merits based on the, the proposed structure, how it met the design standards. Um, so again, I think, you know, staff provide some comments on those and for the board to, to think about moving forward as well. Um, also just reflect on there is a, in terms of site access, there is an off-site plan. Um, they are going to have a left-hand turn lane coming in from Gorm Road. Uh, staff's been in constant or in, had a couple of discussions with the uh, applicant and the, uh, their engineer regarding the details around that. We believe that's heading in a pretty good direction. There are some final details to be worked out, but um, ostensibly I think we're in general agreement around that. Um, let's see, staff also noted comments with regards to landscaping and buffering, as the board had talked about, particularly buffering to the uh, residential uh, neighbors. Um, again, this is in the TVC3, which does allow for this, but um, the ordinance does sort of talk about sensitivity to, to existing um, uses. There was some confusion regarding the light standards, or actually the lighting plan, um, and so hopefully the applicant is prepared to sort of talk through that. And then um, one thing that staff didn't note in our, in our um, comment, and I apologize, is there actually, I, we didn't see any detail in, in regards to a sign on the plans. Um, so oh, there's a location, but actually no details to what the sign would look like. So um, just some, I guess there would be questions around that moving forward. Um, so uh, I think with that as an overview, Mr. Chair, I'll turn it back to you and here to answer any questions moving forward. Thanks, Jay, and I'll turn it over to Mr. Allen. Great. Thank you, members of the board. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, my name is Lee Allen with Northeast Civil Solutions. Uh, joined tonight by the developers, uh, Mike Schuler, Tim Boardman, and Jeff Gambardella. Um, also joined by Chris Bacala of Custom Concepts, he'll be talking about the architecture. I um, want to just jump right into the, the main DOT permit. 
Um, this has been in the works. We've been going back and forth. We did some traffic counts at Sebago Brewing, took the number of seats in that restaurant, did some math, and came up with a, a traffic count. And we said, okay, that, that number is less than what we need for a traffic movement permit. We then referenced the ITE trip generation manual. There are currently three editions that are out there kind of being used. The main DOT uses edition seven. There's an edition eight, and a few years ago, edition nine came out. The, the ceiling fact for this to make this work was that the edition nine counts or trip generation rates matched up almost identically with what we were counting at Sebago Brewing. So as a combination of those two factors, the main DOT looked at this and said, okay, we agree with your numbers. You don't need a traffic movement permit. Now, although we don't need a traffic movement permit, there's still enough trips out there that do require offsite improvements. We still need the left turn lane. So in the grand scheme of things, everything's going to look the same. It's just a matter of um, trip generation, and we still need the left turn lane. Um, as for parking, we've provided 55 spaces. Um, it meets the ordinance. We feel comfortable that it meets the ordinance. And if there's going to be an issue, we ask that you know the, the guys running the, the restaurant and the brewery uh, address that when it becomes necessary. This is a copy of the landscape plan, which I believe you have, which uh, we are required. You have a 25 foot buffer on called the east side of the property because the zone changes from TVC3 to VR2, which is a residential zone. <coughs> We've proposed some plantings in there. Um, based on feedback and discussions with the landscape architect, we are now going to propose a fence, six to five fence, that runs back to the, the wetland. On the west side of the property, we've proposed um, a row of arborvitae. We're also going to supplement this side with a fence from about this area back to the wetland edge. Um, I think that will help reduce the noise and obviously any visual um, from one side to the other. There's also some discussion about arborvitae and whether we're using mature enough arborvitae. We're now proposing instead of six to seven foot high arborvitae as a, as a minimum, we're going to go to the seven to eight foot tall. It gives us a little more height, they're a little bit mature, they'll do a better job at, at screening. There's also some question, our mechanical area is located in this portion of the building. We're going to add four more spruce trees to increase the buffer around the mechanical equipment. Um, as for lighting, we had proposed a lighting plan. We showed what it's going to look like when all the, uh, the site <coughs> lights are on. Um, I'm not sure where the confusion is, but when the business is closed, those lights are going to go out. There will be some, I think, one or two lights on the building, shoebox lights. Those will be left on after hours to provide security lights around the building. As for signage, it's my understanding, and, and staff can correct me if I'm wrong, but we're showing a location. We believe that anything we do for signage is goes through the code enforcement officer, but I can be corrected if I'm wrong in that regard. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to the architect. He's going to talk about the, the building. Hi, Chris Backle of Custom Concepts. Um, so, what we did, and I'll touch upon a, a few items. Do you mind just on. grabbing the mic if you're if you're going to be away from the podium, just yeah. so everyone can oh. hear? Great, thanks. Um, Turn on. I think it is. Thank you. 
visible section showing the, <laughs> the post of the construction inside. Other item I wanted to No, I think that was it. I just wanted to make sure that you're aware that, that we added the stair and, and we have the nine other metal. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Do you have anything else, Lee? That, um, one thing I did miss, I want to just point out, we did receive uh, approval from the DEP. Uh, that should have been in your packet. I forgot to mention that. Okay. I'm that happy to answer the questions. Thank you for flagging that. Thanks. Um, once again, we have the opportunity for public comment. Um, before we go to board discussion, I will note briefly we did receive a number of um, letters over the last few days uh, uh, in support of this. Uh, we've seen correspondence in the past about various concerns around parking and so forth. Um, and I think that's all been sort of incorporated into the process. Um, but if anyone would like to come up and uh, speak, now's your opportunity. And I just ask you to give your name and address and uh, keep it uh, to five minutes or less. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so my name is Chuck Bradish. I uh, live at 16 Meadon House Road. I've uh, been here about 11 years. Uh, and I'll say, for one, from a personal perspective, I'm very excited about this uh, proposed brew pub uh, restaurant going in and it's just down the street from me. I'm hoping uh, arguably walking distance. Uh, the only piece is getting across the river, so hopefully someday there'll be a sidewalk there, so I'm looking forward to that as well. Um, the reason from a personal sp perspective we'd like this, uh, our family lifestyle involves long hours at work, exercise a lot, very involved in the community. I'm on booster boards. Um, my wife does a lot of work with the schools, uh, and so we find ourselves eating out a lot. Um, and so when we're looking at the restaurants, we like to dine in Scarborough, uh, but we find a limited menu, right? And so what we find is that we're going out of Scarborough uh, to hit the restaurants. Uh, not desirable. Um, I will say some of our, our, our standard dining is brew pubs. We love the brew pub environment. I really do. Um, it's very family friendly. Uh, it's relaxing. Uh, and that's what I'm looking for after a long day of work, right? And so we're really looking forward to that. Um, from a community standpoint though I got to say um, I've seen these drawings I think it looks great I think based on the setting and by the river I think this this building looks very very attractive and so for it to be right down the street for me I, I'm in love with it and finally I think from a community standpoint another restaurant in Scarborough is only a very good thing the town continues to expand and that just broadens the area of restaurants in the area and I think that's a fabulous thing thank you anyone else Hello, uh, my name is Tai Yen Vo. I live at uh, 205 Golden Road, which is the adjacent property to this uh, proposed um, restaurant brewery. Um, I have two um, two things I'd like to uh, applicant to mention uh, address is that one of them is uh, the uh, sewer connection. So if you could, you know, uh, uh, yeah, explain or give me some understanding about how you're going to connect it. And um, secondly, uh, about the traffic, um, I'm just afraid that you know once this up and running, I'm going to be having a hard time um, driving into my driveway and also driving out because of, uh, may, there may be a queue of cars uh, waiting to turn into uh, the restaurant. So that's something that uh, I hope that you can also address that. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Tom Simons. I live at 168 Gorham Road. Uh, so once again, somebody hopefully within walking distance, um, despite the quote bridge unquote over the river. Um, my family and I are also very excited about this. Um, we've lived in Scarborough for a little over 10 years. I grew up in Southern Maine. I've seen what happens when towns turn into uh, addressing narrowly expressed concerns of the abutters, but I also have seen this process go forward, and I want to thank the board for addressing the concerns of the people who are immediately impacted. I'm five or six buildings away. The impact is slightly less. 
I live on 114. I knew what I was buying when I bought the house. I listen to it every day. I sometimes have trouble getting out of my driveway. But I also know that I live in and near mixed use zoning. I live within hearing of the old exit 6A. <laughs> I live within hearing of Gallery Boulevard. I see the lights at night. I knew what I was getting when I bought that house. So to see a locally owned business and not a chain, to see the investment coming into my neighborhood, I'm really excited about that. Yes, out of the interest of disclosure, I'm interested as well in the uh, beer. <laughs> But uh, lying if I wasn't. So I'm excited on many levels. I'm not particularly scared of the impact. I live on a major artery. I can handle this. And uh, to see the investment being made locally is very exciting. And I think this is going to be a very good fit for the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Steve Cassio. I'm a resident at 10 Howard Lane in Scarborough, Maine. Um, I just want to come up and say a few words just because I think this is a, a great concept that these guys have brought to the town. They've done it the right way. Um, they've, they've talked with many of the families and networked and really built up a consensus, if you will. So um, I have personally coached in the town a number of youth sports, having coached with one of the applicants and got to know the others as well over a period of time. So. I think having been in this town for 10 years, you see a number of different scenarios unfold in this town. There's the concept of you build it and they will come, as you see over at Cabela's and Hagus Parkway. And there's some mixed results there. I think in this case, it's a group of grassroots guys, local guys who are doing this thing the right way, and they're going out of their way to make sure that they check the boxes along the way. There's a lot of ground, um, ground support in town, a lot of swelling of support that people are excited about this. And um, I know that there's a lot of work left to be done in terms of the building, the construction, and getting those doors open. And um, I'm looking forward to, to this board being able to support these guys and help them, you know, get their dream up and running and, uh, again, bring some excitement to the town. So that's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. Would you mind just quickly uh, spelling your last name just so we make yep, sure we have it? last name is Cassio, C-A-S-C-I-O. Thank you. Good evening, I'm William Cook. I live at 11 Ridgeway Road, which is about 0.5 miles from the front door of this restaurant. And uh, I gotta tell you, we are very excited on our street, everybody I've talked to. Uh, I think you all know the history of that property and what an eyesore it was. And I think something like this is gonna be a great visual entrance into town. That's one of the main thoroughfares coming into town. And if we can get something exciting and something you know beautiful built there, uh, I think that'll really up the you know, the quality of that area. From a, you know, somebody who lives in a neighborhood, we're very excited about that. And second of all, I think uh, if you've been paying attention to the newspapers, uh, the craft brewing industry in Maine is just exploding right now. There are 71 craft breweries in the state of Maine. <laughs> and to put Scarborough on the map with something like that, uh, it was definitely going to be an attraction for people. Uh, craft beer itself has become a, a destination uh, spot for people. So people coming into town for vacations and things like that, to have something like this, that's something that they're going to want to. They're going to want to go to, and it's another thing that uh, I think puts Scarborough on the map. So uh, I'm for it. Everybody I've talked to, my neighborhood's for it. We're looking forward to having something uh, that will basically take away that eyesore that was there before. And uh, we, wish these guys, we wish these guys great uh, luck and success with that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, yes, I'm. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm Dick Boardman. I live at 37 Gunstock Road in Scarborough. Uh, I know the importance of community, and we're all very fortunate to live in such a great town as Scarborough. I've organized community pig roasts to bring our neighbors together for 36 years of blocks and blocks of people just to get neighbors together. <coughs> Since my retirement <coughs> excuse me, in 2008, I was a founding member of Buy Local Scarborough, and it's important to see other people mention how important our small businesses are to our town. I served as president of Buy Local Scarborough for three years and I've been on the board ever since 2009. Believe it or not, I've traveled in 
2012 and 2013, I traveled 2,300 miles in Scarborough to talk to small business members and get businesses going, and we've increased our membership to over 200 in that period of time. For my, <coughs> excuse me, for my profession, I was a director of new business development for an international marine company that, <coughs> excuse me, that supported the U.S. Navy. I traveled in the U.S. and globally for 32 years and leaving out of Scarborough, Portland Airport, flying somewhere and coming back. Now, as a result, I had a lot of business friends, a lot of associates and clients that would come to visit here, and there's no good place to take them. And I'm not showing disrespect to the businesses that we do have, but we'd usually end up going down to Portland for a meal to have a beverage and have some social contact and a place to meet. So it's been over 20 years that I've talked about we need a great place in Scarborough, <coughs> and this Nonsuch River Brew Pub fits that type of restaurant that I had in mind. I re reviewed the business plans, and I met with the master brewer and also with the master chef. I think this will be a great <coughs> uh, location for the town of Scarborough, where you can take people and your friends and have a social night out, uh, and I hope there'll be a and I'm quite confident they'll be a member of by local Scarborough. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Well, thank you all for your comments. We greatly appreciate it, and we appreciate the correspondence as well. Um, Mike, would you like to start us off? Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, I appreciate all those comments. Um, uh, Despite the fact that uh, so many people feel good about <clears throat> what this rest restaurant represents, we still have to focus on the ordinance. And um, but the reasons behind uh, why uh, this may be such a great idea is probably why the zone now is a TBC zone as opposed to a residential zone a few years ago. Jay, when was the TBC zone expanded to this area? Do you remember? Boy, I don't recall offhand. I'm sorry. Probably. Within 10 years. I was going to say, within the last five to six right. years would have been my... So um, so it's nice to see that the work of uh, those that had uh, um, impact to change in the zone is resulting in these kinds of efforts by, uh, by others. Um, I'd like to talk about a little bit about the, uh, the abutters, however, because um, I, am con I am concerned and interested in making sure that that impact is as minimal as possible. Now, the, uh, the gentleman that um, occupies the property to the left um, expressed in a letter um, a, a little bit of a disappointment as far as what was originally proposed for the vegetation. Mm -hmm. Now, am I right in saying that you've, you've uh, improved upon that vegetation since that letter was written and you've added a fence? Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So my, my sense is that those two components would go a long way and and, and help it reduce the impact, especially since there's going to be mechanicals right there. Correct. And the fence will do more than, well, at least immediately, the fence will help in uh, minimizing any kind of noise impact. Yeah. And we've also proposing to add more landscaping, more spruce trees around that mechanical area, as well as increase the height, which is the maturity of the arborvitae that we're going to install. And, and the details of which are very specific in the in the plan that uh, we would be considering to approve, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, what about the sewer connection? What what can we say about that? Okay. So what we found is that there was an easement from Mr. Blue's property. There was a sub that had subbed into his property long ago while the house was still there. The house had never hooked into the sewer. So the easement was to allow him to train his sewer and tie into that connection main in that connection. What we're doing is we actually have a kitchen waste, interior waste coming through the grease trap out here, and then the brewery waste coming out of a separate line. They come together in what is going to be required from the sanitary district with a sewer manhole. What we're proposing is to take his service and pipe that into that same manhole. So there'll be the, his service, the service from the brewery, and the service from the restaurant all coming together in that manhole on the property. So there will be a disruption of a couple hours while we swap out one and connect in the other. Um, mm -hmm. So I think we, that's the, the best way to address that. That will continue um, his service through the corner of our property, which is, which is fine. 
Now the um, the uh, the center lane, the left turn lane, is that? I don't. It's not easily illustrated. If it is, forgive me, because I don't see how. Do I have plans of that? You should. Okay. I can pull it up. Ma maybe it's because it, the plans have gotten smaller over the years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what's happened. So maybe you can illustrate, Lee, for me um, the distance, how many cars can be accommodated in the lane, and what, if any, impact that might have on sure. folks entering sure. and leaving their property. So what we're proposing, we've met with staff several times on this because, as you know, there's an initiative in play where the majority of Route 114 from Route 1 all the way to um, Payne Road is going to be upgraded in phases. Um, Unfortunately, the last phase is going to be in front of where we are, uh, but that's okay. Uh, there's plenty of width out there now, so what we're proposing to do is do so, uh, some little bit of widening in this area as the pavement along here, more pavement along there. That will give us the width we need to uh, accommodate a left turn lane. Traffic this way, pull in this way. There's room to stack two cars in that left turn pocket and turn into the site. This is a paper to paper stack down, basically brings those two lanes back together again. Um, it meets all the DOT criteria. The, the big thing is the road's in a little bit of tough shape, so we're working with the town to figure out a way that we can improve this section of road um, right now with some patching and maybe some o overlaying and, and working with Public Works to get that all figured out. But that's definitely in the works. It's going to happen. It's just a matter of, of how, who, and where. Okay. Now, um, from from this distance, where I see the left turn arrows, yes. is that is that the um, an illustration of where the queue would be? Correct. Right. That's, that's 50 feet. That's 50 feet. So you would have to go approximately another what 100 feet, 150 feet before to the left before it would potentially impact okay. the neighbor's driveway. There, there's actually room right now. This. This is coming the other way. That road tapers out to accommodate a right turn onto Spring Street as well as a straight ahead to mm -hmm. Payne Road. So there's, there's width in here. Cars are, are splitting. Um, these, this queue will not be more than two. Uh, it's in the traffic report, the updated traffic report, that that queue will never exceed two cars based on the amount of flow. Well, the design of the queue won't exceed two cars. Correct. But to say the queue won't exceed two cars is probably not necessarily... We can't. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean. So what I was trying to get uh, wrap my arms around was how many cars potentially might be in queue, whether it's legal or not, that could before it would impact the driveway. And it looks like what are we oh, saying? Geez, Five, that's, six. That's, 50, that's another. That's 88 feet right there. So okay. that could be another four cars. So that's six cars. Okay. And um, thank you. And to the right of the property, the other abutter, we're doing something similar. There's already a stand of trees there, is there not? There is. That's correct. There's also there is also in this area right here. Um, there's an easement. Um, that's where water drains off that road presently, and it runs down into the, into the stream that's in the back. In okay. the future, uh, I'm anticipating that when that this is going to be curbed and there'll be a sidewalk out here, there'll be a catch basin, and I'm quite certain there's going to be a pipe that discharges water, okay. utilizing that easement. And uh, didn't we talk about? Um, that the water that will will a sheet flow off the parking lot, and no, the water is all contained in the parking lot. We have through these catch basins. Catch basins. Okay. We have uh, underground stormwater detention in a, a series of pipes. Okay. Um, we've already talked about snow storage. You have it illustrated on the plan. I don't have a whole lot to add. We've vetted this out pretty much, I think, and um, I, I like the illustrations. I like the uh, the um, architecture, and um, I think that um, this is a, um, a great addition to this area of town, and I'm looking forward to um, to seeing it mature and to uh, open for business, if you will. So thanks for all your hard work, Lee, and appreciate it. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Mike. Jay? If I might, just on a point of clarification on the sewer line connection. Yeah. That the, the plan that uh, Mr. Allen described is the plan that's shown on the plan. 
And that's, that's the one that the sanitary district indicated would not work. They have indicated that they need to have separate lines, so they'll need to continue to have a discussion with yeah. the sanitary district as to... You mean the residents will have to have a separate line? The resident, they'll, they will both have to have separate lines, right. The, so the residential stub, um, the, the sanitary district essentially allows each each user to have their own discrete sewer line, not to tie into a, a singular manhole as is being proposed. So unless there's been discussion with the sanitary yeah. district since Tuesday, um, the staff comments still hold. Um, and that, again, is a detail that it, would right. I think I think it's a simple detail to work out. It's a, it's a matter of do we consider that manhole and give an easement to the sanitary district and consider that a main, in which case it would be okay, or do we go ahead and pipe individual services across to the main which is in the street. Either way, it, it's a, it's a simple in the, detail. In any other case, where approvals wouldn't be allowed until we get approval from the sanitary district. Correct. Right. I just wanted to be sure that. Okay. That, right. I just wanted to be sure that what was understood that, at, at least as staff understand that the sanitary district has reviewed the plan before the board and they're not satisfied. I Whether that change is moving forward. I asked, the, I asked the question for the benefit of the abutter more than anything. But, okay. uh, and if I could just add the sign, um, I think it is w within our right and within our uh, design guidelines to, uh, to request uh, that you come back sure. and show us the sign. I'd like to see it. Um, I trust the planning department could make just as uh, valued a decision as I, but I think, I think I'd like to see it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Nick? Thank you. Um, yeah, along the same lines, um, you know, the sign. I, I don't think I necessarily need to see it, but I would I would personally prefer to know that it's going to be a monument style. Uh, I know we have height restrictions, but something that the staff can work with. Um, but that's just my preference. That I don't think I need to see it, but I I would prefer a monument style signage to kind of keep with what's going on in the town with the the appearances that we're trying to keep. Um, I would say that I, I do appreciate the extra efforts you've gone through um, to do some of the work on the buffering with the abutters. Um, it, you have added additional steps in here um, from your first version, so I appreciate that the, the extra consideration on those those aspects. Um, outside of that, I, I don't have much to add. As my colleague noted, uh, we've pretty well vetted a lot of this. So I'm okay right now. Thank you. Roger? Uh, thank you. Um, I uh, basically agree with my two colleagues uh, regarding everything. I think I think the site looks great. I mean, the, the rendering, the architectural rendering looks terrific, and I think it really helps to have it uh, referencing the other structure there, because I think in, when we saw it initially, it might have seemed overwhelming, but even though I liked it then as well. Um, the, uh, I just have a, a couple of questions for clarification. Um, the uh, site right now has been cleared. Is, it, is that all the clearing that's going to be done? Or is going to be no further clearing? It's my understanding that yes, that's correct. Okay. There, right. there might be one tree left that needs to come down, but I think they're leaving it to see if it falls in the way of anything. Okay. Just by being out there, I don't see, see any more than one, possibly two trees that would have to come down. Okay. Um, when you were here last, there was a lot of discussion about the parking. <coughs> um, and I don't frankly think queuing is going to be a big issue because, I, as I said the last time, if you go to a restaurant and it's the parking lot's full, you go to another restaurant. Uh, <laughs> so I really don't think that's going to be a big issue. Um, but it, uh, the, the seating is, there's 142 seats in the place. And it was some discussion. Uh, it, it's mentioned that there's going to be seasonal seating on the deck. Does that mean there's going to be whatever seating was inside is going to go outside, or is yes. that going to be additional seating? Or? It, it will. It, it will not and cannot exceed the 142. I think what my understanding of what happened. There's some mezzanine seating upstairs that can move out onto the deck in the summer. It won't exceed 142. When it gets cold, it's going to move back okay. inside. Okay. Okay. That's what I thought, but I just wanted. Yeah, to and we're going to add notes to the plan to make sure that that's. Crystal clear. Okay. Um, the um, because in in your um, in, in the notes here, the parking is meeting the minimal standard, you know, and that's all predicated on that seating. Correct. Um, I don't. I don't think. 
Oh, the only other comment I'd make is about the TVC zoning. Um, I remember when the town was discussing doing these things, and it was to create these village environments. And there's quite a mixture of different types of, you know, uh, businesses as well as um, different types of residential structures that can go into these these places. I think it's very incumbent upon whoever's doing anything in these places that they're very sensitive to their neighbors. So, um, and I see no evidence that this is not going to be the case here. Um, so I, I wish you all well, and I, you know, especially with Mr. Wu, I think it's important because his house is so close to that property that um, special attention be given to him and his concerns. So I have, no, I have nothing further. Thanks, Roger. Susan? Thank you. Um, I'm the gal that's got the parking problem. But I agree that it isn't our problem. It's going to be the problem of the restaurant and pub owner. Um, I just want to make it quite clear. I mean, I think what I said last time I'm going to stick with. You're going to be very successful if you make good beer and you make good food. I assume you're going to make good beer and good food and you're going to be very successful. I don't think you've got enough parking, and that's your problem. Just as long as we know that the solution to that problem is not parking on the street. Okay? I also just want to make a note to anybody who may be watching on television that last time we were told that it wasn't going to be a problem because we were <coughs> going to have, what's the word, that when someone drives your car? Bella. Yeah, over to the church. That made me feel a whole lot better, and then I got thinking. Beer, church, hmm, maybe not. It turns out that it was all just words. It wasn't a possibility, and it's not going to happen. So I'm back to saying, I think you're going to have a problem. And I also get a big kick out of, you know, you go to the restaurant, and if it's busy, you go to another one. Didn't we just say there aren't any other ones? <laughs> Which is why we're so excited that you're coming, and we really are. You know, I mean, I, I just have, I'm a parking person when I'm not a landscape person. So now I'm going to go into landscaping. Tell me a little more about the fence that's going to be created between the, sure. the abutter. What's it made of? Wood, cedar, it's going stockade. To be a stockade fence. Correct. I have a real problem with stockade fences. They don't last. Is there any way that we can put sort of a maintenance contract on the stockade fence? Um, I mean, we can tell the owners that we expect that it's going to be maintained. But, you know, stockade is cheap and cheerful, and it doesn't last. So if there's any possibility of thinking of something a little more rugged as a way of saying to the abutter that we really do care, I'm not going to make that a condition of approval, but I think it's clear that you really want to work with the abutter. And I think that, you know, that's something that you could do without investing a whole lot of extra effort. Um, signage, I agree. We probably don't have to by ordinance, but it's one of the things that happens is that we do get to see the signage and can ooh and ah and be very pleased. I'm a little confused about the lighting only because I don't how I don't know how to read those things. Um, how many of these parking lights are we going to have, and how high are they going to be? Wait one second, I can read. You go. You, you tell me because. Oh, while you're doing that, I'm going to have another landscape thing. Arborvitae doesn't it usually just grow right straight up? I mean, depends, it's not it, like it's, it's depends on the type of species okay, so of arborvitae. Okay, so this is going to be fuller than what I think of as arborvitae. I mean, That's I always think of juniper as being a really good choice when you're trying to have dense foliage. And arborvitae pretty much goes, it's very architectural, but it usually goes straight up. So I'm not going to question whether it's going to work or not because we have the fence, but. So eight, eight lights. Eight of them. Eight lights. We usually get, we get, it, 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 most of those lights, if I'm, are, uh, are mounted at 16 and a half feet, and a few are mounted at 20 feet. And our standard typically seeks no more than 20 feet for what it's worth. Okay. Um, I guess that may be my, those may be my concerns. In the meantime, I don't want to make it sound like I'm not excited that you're coming. I can barely stand it. So I wish you good luck, and I hope that I'm wrong about the parking, okay? Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Robin? 
No comment. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I do have a question. Sure. I'm sorry. To our town engineer. Are you happy with <coughs> what you had provided here about the grading and the construction sequence plan? Is that? I think I think that's something that we need to still discuss um, with the engineer, but it can be something that we work okay. through. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Thanks, Lori. Can I just ask you a question? Sure. Um, on the landscape plan, on that page, this is just for my own benefit. On this plant species list, you have down that you're going to have five Princeton elms. And it says, is, am I reading this right? Two, two and a half feet high? Uh, that, that's the caliper. So typically, the, basically, the calipers generally oh, mean the, 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 the width, the width okay, and that's right. generally measured at <laughs> about that that's four a very feet small in tree. height. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good question. I have the same thought. Right. Thank you. Okay. You got that clarified. All right. Well, actually, if I might, just on that point, sure. in just trying to sort of understand where we're headed with this, but, but one of the staff comments have been related to the caliper of the trees, because what they proposed to date is the minimum standard for caliper of trees, and I did hear, I think at the outset, the applicant talked about maybe using larger trees, at least particularly along the VU property, Correct. as I understood it, um, and so I just want to be clear on where we're talking about um, for any revised right. plans that staff may be reviewing. Yeah. Um, or so if it's going to come back to the board, you know, we can look at it then as well. Anywhere there's going to be arborvitae, instead of six to seven foot, they're going to be seven to eight foot. Same caliper. Which means a bigger caliper. Bigger well, well, arborvitae are measured in height. They, yes. they, they vary. So to complicate matters, yeah. evergreens are measured in height. Yeah. Um, right. So, yeah. sorry. So <laughs> we've literally gone into the weeds here. <laughs> 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 okay. All right, thank you. Excuse me. Um, so, like uh, my colleagues, I'm I'm happy with where we're ending up here. Uh, actually, really like the architecture, and I agree with folks who said uh, during the public comment period that I think it's going to make a nice statement and an, kind of a nice gateway into that part of town. Um, and I, I think it's I think it, I think it's going to be a, a nice addition, especially considering what's what's been there. But even on its own merits, I think it's well done. Um, I appreciate the uh, the willingness of the applicant to to work with work with the abutters and with the board and staff on screening and buffering. Um, when we get to, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to put forward a, a draft a motion of approval here in a couple minutes. It has some conditions to it, and there's one condition. When we get to that, it's condition 1A, which sort of intended to be kind of a catch-all, if you will, um, for for those items like. Um, any kind of landscaping refinements, um, continued uh, tweaking on the uh, on the on the sewer connections and so forth with staff, um, and we can see how folks feel about that when we get there. Uh, but at this point, it's not something that was planning to break out as individual conditions. Um, I uh, I'm glad that um, we got clarification on the seating capacity. I was going to ask that same question, Roger. I uh, focused on the on the same thing as I'm sure others did as well um, about the indoor versus outdoor seating and I guess what I would say on that is to kind of echo in a, in a way what Ms. Oglis said that that's really going to the burden will be on the on the owner and the operator to make sure that they comply with the occupancy limits as with any business um, and that goes hand in hand with the parking um, so just wanted to kind of echo that um, I also would like to see the signage. I mean, it shouldn't be onerous, um, and I'm sure I'm feeling we'll be happy with it. But I, I think we would like to exercise that that right um, to, to to take a look at that. Um, beyond that, um, again, I appreciate the responsiveness to about our concerns and and to staff and, and board comments. And I think, um, you know, as Mr. Wood said, this has been pretty well vetted at this point, and um, Unless there are any other comments or questions from the board, I'd, I'd like to go ahead and put a motion forward. And uh, apologize in advance, it's somewhat lengthy, but 
we'll get there. I move to approve the application of none such properties LLC represented by NCS under Chapter 405 Zoning Ordinance and Chapter 405B Site Plan Review Ordinance with the following findings and conditions. The findings. None such properties LLC proposes to develop property identified on the Town of Scarborough tax maps as map R55, lot 34, 201 Gorham Road. The site is approximately 2.08 acres with frontage along Gorham Road. The property is located within the TVC3 zoning district. The proposed development includes the construction of a 5,247 square foot footprint structure which will be occupied by a restaurant and an accessory brewery along with associated infrastructure improvements. The Planning Board has reviewed the application and supporting documentation and finds that the proposed design of the site plan adequately addresses the site plan review ordinance and zoning ordinance requirements for site utilization and layout, access, internal vehicular movement, pedestrian ways, landscaping, stormwater management, architecture, signage, utilities, and storage. Conditions of approval are as follows. One, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall A, and this is just a side note, this is the sort of catch-all um, one that I mentioned earlier, provide revised plans to address all comments identified in the review memorandums by planning staff Woodard and Curran and Angela Blanchett, town engineer. Final plans to be reviewed and approved by planning staff in coordination with the direction provided by the board during deliberation. B, pay traffic impact fees in accordance with the Girl Palmer memo dated April 4th, 2016. C, pay $8,700 to the town in lieu of being required to construct a, construct a sidewalk along the Gorham Road frontage. The funds are to be directed to an account dedicated to the Gorham Road Corridor Improvement Project. D. Submit a letter of approval from the Scarborough Sanitary District. E. Conduct a pre-construction meeting in coordination with the senior planner. The meeting shall include appropriate town staff, the developer and his site and general contractor, among any others deemed necessary. And condition number two. Prior to the issuance of a signed permit, the applicant shall provide a detailed plan for review by the planning board. That is the motion. I'll second. <coughs> I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Show that to be unanimous. Great. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Good luck. Okay. transition here for a minute. <laughs> Item number 10, Martins Point Healthcare requests a site plan amendment review for 153 U.S. Route 1, Assessor's Map U47, Lot 92. Jay? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, let's see, as board members will recall, uh, Martins Point received approval for this site back in February of this year. Um, this is the site where Scarborough Commons was uh, to about a year and a half or two years ago and burnt down, and uh, Martins Point is going to rebuild. Subsequent to their approval, um, the applicant is now before the board with a request for roof mounted mechanical equipment. Um, Board members who recall during the initial discussion, there had been some dialogue with the applicant about the location of those, and they were originally going to be located within the structure. And again, they're now before the board for consideration under the criteria of the design standards for roof mounted uh, mechanicals. Uh, with it. Other than that, all the other elements that staff understand it from the approval are to remain the same. With that, I turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Jay, and I will turn it over to the applicant's representative. Okay, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, my name is Derek Fayou. I'm an architect with SMRT Architects and Engineers, um, and I presented at the previous um, meeting. 
and I have with me uh, Jake Jepson <coughs> from Martins Point and Craig Burgess from Sebago Technic. Should there be any questions to address um, on that on the owners or um, site front? Um, and that's correct. As you recall, at the last meeting, we, we were pretty certain we could get all of the um, mechanical units inside of the building. Um, what we determined when we did um, some further design on the uh, HVAC systems is that we needed to make some modifications. Um, with that said, we are equally um, sensitive to the aesthetics of the, of the facility and the visibility of any units on the exterior of the building um, to the abutters or to Route 1. So we have some images that we've prepared today just to show what that would look like, um, what, how that would impact the uh, design of the facility. Um, I do feel that the design we're presenting today is really um, a very good balance between um, the, the request to have the um, uh, units screened um, while also meeting the needs of the facility um, mechanically. So if, if you'll recall, um, the one is, is this working? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, if you recall, the one is on this flank on the right side of the plan. Um, so this is the flank of the one. Um, this is the main entrance of the facility and parking is on the lower portion of the plan. And I have, um, as a reminder, Orient them, to orient them the same way um, that is site plan as um, reference or as oriented to the same um, direction plan I have in front of the roof plan I have in front of <coughs> So what we are proposing is um, not putting any rooftop units uh, facing Route 1 and having three um, package units at the rear of the building that would be screened on two sides by a five foot high screen wall that has the same materials as the primary structure, um, which is clabbered siding um, in order to screen those from the abutters. So the screening would run across the north flank, the west flank, and the south flank to screen those uh, from the abutters. Um, in addition to that, by having um, the mechanical unit um, at the front house within the building, we do need to add a small condenser pad uh, at the northwest corner of the site. And I have that shown on the plan, and that would be located right there, tucked up against the building. The package units that we have um, planned for the rear of the building have uh, condensing units built into them. If you know, if you're not sure what a package unit is, um, the condensing cooling system is built within the unit, so we don't need this additional pad on the ground. We felt that that was a plus because that's if we didn't have um, package units on the building, we'd have three to four um, condenser units mounted on pads around the building and we felt that this was a better um, uh, solution to address the aesthetic of the high risk units from um, the other. So as we take a look at the elevation of the building, the screening that, that we're adding to the screen of the units is shown here on the left hand side of that um, elevation. You can see it again here on the right hand side of that elevation and then the rear you can barely see it on um, the screen in that configuration. And as we said, we're, we're striving just to match the uh, primary structure and the primary materials of the building. And then we did do a couple of quarter studies, uh, these quarter studies, just to show uh, what you might see of the unit. Um, also, if you recall, at the northwest corner of the site, there's some existing um, vegetation buffer that we're maintaining in place. I did not show that on, um, on this perspective here. Um, because you wouldn't have been able to see the unit itself uh, from that view. So you can see the corner of that uh, screen wall peeking out of the corner there. And from the south on Route 1 going north, you'll see that it's entirely hidden by the structure itself. So we feel that this is a pretty minor change. Um, it, is, it is not um, wholesale <coughs> change the aesthetics of the facility. It responds to <coughs> the, the request that these units be screened and it does so in a, um, in a balanced approach. Thank you. Um, we do have the opportunity for public comment, if anyone wants to talk about HVAC. <laughs> All right. Clearly it's not as exciting as a proof yeah. of. <laughs> I know, that, that's, that's a hard act to follow. Yeah. Do you have any trees? Don't take, <laughs> don't take it personally. Um, does anyone on the board have any questions or concerns? Mike? 
I, I don't. I just have to say this is, uh, given the, re the reasons why you're here, I have to say after probably more than 10 years of planning board experience, it's the most complete package mm. that I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. Thank you. And part of me wants to apologize, boy, that you went to such great lengths, but it's truly appreciated. I mean, it, it just makes it so easy to visualize exactly what you're doing, how you're, how you're going about to do it, and how, how uh, it makes it just so easy to say, uh, I approve. <laughs> so, so thank you. Thanks. Anyone else? Just a quickie. Um, I appreciate the fact that they're going to be in the back and all of this, but why why is the not going to be covered all the way to the top? Why is it five feet and not covering, not covering, but to, to fully enclose the, the um, structures in the facility, it would have meant pulling back on. Um, I knew there was a reason. <laughs> pulling back on. It essentially would have meant pulling back the I knew there was a reason. There, so this here that makes it a little bit softer of a transition. I'm married to an HVAC engineer, so <laughs> I had to ask. Um, and then I'm just curious again on the second page of your letter. It says um, the area of the mechanical units benefits from a robust existing buffer, but it has been supplemented with evergreen and deciduous trees and various understory plantings. That was part of the original. Um, right. Yeah, it wasn't. Right. It wasn't new to this. Okay. No, just a reminder that there is some screening there already. Yes. Part of the design. And I want to echo what Mike said. It, <laughs> from the ridiculous to the sublime, we've done both tonight. So thank you for making the effort. It was very much appreciated. Sure. I'm set. Thank you. Anyone else? Just Pleasure. a question. What's your timeline for starting some yeah, that's a construction? Good we are starting as soon as the permits are in place. Okay. <laughs> the, project <laughs> <laughs> the project has been issued for permits and construction documents um, are have been issued, so we're ready to start in time. So what's work? We did conduct the uh, uh, pre-construction meeting on this project on Friday, I believe it was. Uh -huh. So they're great. Nice. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. All right. Um, Let's make a motion, Mr. Chairman, if there's no <laughs> further discussion. Get us out of here. Be my guest. I'm a little tired from all that reading. That's what I one. thought. That's what I yeah. figured, you know. You'll take this long one. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to approve the application of Martin's Point for the site plan amendment of Martin's Point at 153 U.S. Route 1 to modify the location of mechanical equipment as proposed in addition to the uh, rear uh, pad as illustrated tonight. I'll second it. Sharing the duties. Yeah. I don't see any discussion. All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good evening. Look forward to uh, seeing activity there. You bet. <laughs> Right, is there a town planner's report? Yep, just no. a couple of things to make note of. I'm sure board members have noticed that there have been improvements that started at Oak Hill intersection and they're well underway, probably three quarters of the way done or so. Um, I think just one thing that board members should take note of is, you know, the, the work that's going on there really ties into the work that this board does, as noted by how it's tying into the sidewalk that was constructed with that assisted living facility. Um, so, you know, when when we talk about sidewalks that are leading to nowhere, there we do have a plan for some of these things, and sometimes they come together, and this is one of those instances. So I just felt that was worth noting for the board to keep in mind. Um, other item, just want to mention that the uh, planning department, and uh, led by town engineer and planning director, held a meeting down at Pine Point uh, in regards to those uh, infrastructure improvements down uh, as you approach East Grand Avenue. Um, that meeting was held last week, if I'm not mistaken, and um, so that project is, is getting ready to gear up. And then the third item, just want to note that this coming Wednesday, um, the council will be having a stormwater workshop, um, and so cover a lot of the same sort of issues that we covered in our stormwater program, that they have a couple of other items they need to get updated on that you don't need to be as worried about, but um, just so you know, if you're interested, tune in or show up. Um, Always great to have people 
riveted by storm water, right, Angela? <laughs> yes. So um, those are what I have to announce. Thank or you. Report, I suppose. Thank you. Uh, administrative amendment report. Yep. One item to report on the Scarborough Land Trust. Folks may remember they bought the what is now called the Pleasant Hill Preserve, formerly Benjamin Farm. Mm -hmm. um, they are going to establish a formal parking lot out there, um, and so. We, uh, it's, I think, eight to 12 spaces, sort of a gravel park, as you would typically expect at sort of a, a nature preserve, if you will. Um, and so that was reviewed and approved administratively. Um, that's all I have. All right, thank you. Uh, planning board comments, I'm sorry, co correspondence. Um, we had lots of it. I noted uh, that we had received some correspondence, uh, actually on a couple of different items, and I'd like to just quickly read off um, these names and these will be added to the record. Um, on the Eastern Village topic, uh, Tom and Karen Atkinson, Paul and Judy Bouchard, Richard and Vivian Bunton, Carol Clark, Jack and Linda Clunan, Mark and Rosemary Dresser, Cecily Hegier, Porcia Hirschman, Richard Hirschman, Sandy Massioni, Paula Sorrentino, Don and Lucia Orth, Christina Padovano, Peter Salisbury, Stephen Shiflett, Stephanie Williams, and Dan Coyne. Um, related to Nunsuch River Brewing, we had Tyan Vu, Rob Dupay, Scott Whit Whittock, Lisa McDonald, Stephen Lilly, Amy Del Delano, Paul Hartline, Eric and Maria Higgins, the Scarborough Free Baptist Church, and Matt and Michelle Arpin. Um, so we, we thank all those folks for for uh, sharing their concerns and opinions with us, and we do always read those, so thank you. Uh, any other correspondence? No? Planning board comments? Roger. Yeah, I actually have a question for Angela, if I may. Uh, along 114, I noticed they've got stakes along the road there. I assume that's in conjunction with the complete streets. Um, there was survey work that was done along that corridor. Is that what you're referring the to? The stakes are all the way along. And I was just kind of curious about one thing. Some of the stakes go quite a bit onto what I perceive to be people's property. Mm -hmm. And there's that drainage ditch. Mm -hmm. it, so is that drainage ditch going to be replaced by a drainage pipe at some in, point? In some areas, yes. Okay. Um, the ditch will be closed up for closed storm drain. And that corridor in particular, the road is not always centered in the right of way. <laughs> um, there's some tricky spots, so it's not surprising that it doesn't look quite right if that is truly what you were looking at as far as yeah. where the right of way was. Yeah. I was just kind of curious about that. We have a plan to sign. Yes, we do have something to sign. Um, I just like to very quickly plug, as I do pretty much every year, the upcoming Scarborough Marsh and Beach cleanup. Um, which convenes at the Audubon Center on Pine Point Road. I believe it's uh, Saturday, uh, April 23rd, which is, I think, the day after Earth Day. It's the way it's usually timed. And it's a great event. And this time of year, anyone who's driving up and down Route 1 can really see all the stuff that's out in the marsh and along the side of the road. And um, it's a, along with the beach is obviously a very important resource for the town. So I encourage anyone who has the opportunity to try to take part. And uh, that's all I've got. And I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Yes. Thank you. Thank right. you.